Is Nikki our most guested guest? I believe she is. Wow. <sighs> I'm really flattered. That it means a lot to me. That is pretty wild. I when I ask you if I can do the podcast, I'm always it's always with a, a million like no pressure. I it's my dream. I but I really just it's a great way to hang out with you. Yes. I know it's like with lights and cameras and microphones, but I feel like we quickly <laughs> let go of that. I don't know. It's just a great way. I just things come out of me. I learn stuff. I was like meditating on the way here. And I was like, I feel like I'm gonna like make out with Whitney today, like because I I know that's like the weird. I don't even know why I just said that, but like that is how you make me. Feel. You're so beautiful to look at. You make me feel so like seen and warm. And like I was just like, I need like a Whitney hug. I just felt um good coming into here today. You are so nice to me, and I love you. And I feel like true friends, which you know, the the older I get, or the maybe the more like girl friendships I sort of get better at and get you know realize never worked and it wasn't my fault uh, I was never a match or going through friend breakups is always weird but I, I yeah. do feel like in romantic relationships I've always like trauma bonding is bad the faster something is the more unhealthy it is oh, but like right. for sometimes I feel like if you really know yourself as a person as you get older like you can make old new friends fast yes and I would have thought that was toxic like two years ago really I would have thought my feelings towards you were toxic. But now I think they're actually like healthy and I know who I am and we actually have really good boundaries. Really good. But when, but I feel like when we connect, we connect hard, but I never am like, is she mad at me? I'm so glad. Why isn't, if you don't text me back, maybe this is, maybe I, you're probably going like, yeah, bitch, I don't I'm trying to send you a message. You didn't get it? I'm like, I don't take it personally. I know it's because you don't want to. No, I just feel like you're busy and you have stuff going on. (laughs) Okay, I need to be a little bit more obvious. (laughs) No, but that's so, that makes me feel good. I love that because I, I, I feel that with you. Like when there's been time, it's, it's so lovely with you because, because we have such a, uh, we're so open about having boundaries and you are so full of like that kind of messaging. There have been times where I'm like, Whitney, I need to to go, and I'm I'm gonna like do exactly what I know that you'll respect me to do, and like it's so hard for me to be like, to, like when you're when you're really connecting, or I have to go, or I want to give you what I think you need, even though you don't need it. Like you were at the comedy store last night, and I was like, I could have crossed paths with you, and then I was just like, I just gotta, because I know I want to just talk to you, and I, that's really where I know that about myself too. I will I will drain my own energy on somebody if I see them, and I'll avoid them. Not to be, like it's not that I don't want to talk to you. I just like want to talk to you so bad, and I know this will go till two in the morning, yes. and I'll abuse myself with you. Yes. Yes. Um, I know what you guys are thinking. Uh, where did Whitney get her cute sweatshirt? This I got on some very sketchy website, mm-hmm. and I don't encourage it. Mm. Um, this was a mistake. The only, I mean, you guys see the stuff that comes in the mail. Mm-hmm. The only thing that has not been a mistake that I put on my body in the last couple of years, frankly, mm-hmm. is this workout stuff. Viore. 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 Yeah. When I'm not wearing my hydrate and masturbate sweatshirt, I'm in a Viore <laughs> sweatsuit. Mm. Because- Emily is wearing a shirt that says hydrate and masturbate. <laughs> Um, it was I'm, a gift. <laughs> and and uh, Grace is wearing a jacket that says Donna. She stole it from someone. Um, and so we we needed this. We yeah. needed an upgrade yeah. in our looks. They are designed to look great in everyday life, aka outside the gym, and they're perfect for any workout activity. So I so here's the thing about me is that I you never know when I'm going to work out. Oh, that is That's so very true. <laughs> true. <laughs> it is. It could come at any moment. Mm-hmm. And I'm always kind of working out. Yep. yep. In many ways, Viore is an investment in your happiness. So for our listeners, they are offering 20% off your first purchase. Because like yeast infections, I just feel like are out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Personally. Mm-hmm. A lot of workout clothes, you're not getting mm-hmm. the the amount of oxygen you need to your crevices. Yeah. And yeah. I've had it. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet. Isn't it versatile? Versatile. versatile. It's it could be potato, potato. Depends on how fancy tomato, you're tomato. Crayon or crown? Crayon. crayon. <laughs> this is a, this is Fiori not going to work. Fiori.com <laughs> slash Whitney. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash Whitney. You owe it to your crevices. Yep. And not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Don't make people look at your ratty workout clothes either. Go to Fiori.com slash Whitney and discover the versatility of Fiori clothing. Okay, so folks, this weekend is a big, big weekend. Jesus is coming back. I it, Jesus is returning um, on Sunday, mm-hmm. um, and also my career is going to end because we are doing a live Good for You podcast. 
no cuts, no Emily going, we can't say that, we need to cut that. I'm just going to say it. And what are you going to do? Nothing. The live show is going to be, it's, um, we're going to have like bowls of drugs and random <laughs> things. We're going to fry our brains. We're also playing Strip Truth or Dare. And then Burt Kreischer is joining mm -hmm. as well. Um, and like my, by the way, Trinking Game, tr by the way, just can we stop for a second? Who wrote this copy? Was it you? No, it was me. Why? Really? We're going to be playing pink. Drinking Game, Strip Truth or Date? Okay. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> it's a little bit of a, that is just such a That's funny a Freudian, Freudian slip. slip. <laughs> Instead of truth or date, you truth, truth or date. date. Tell me the truth or you have to go on a date with me. And it's going to be, I mean, it's, it's going to be, we're going to do some damage. I, I go hard at truth or dare. I, I don't so play scared. around. I'm no. scared. What you guys saw in the Jen Kramer episode where I got blackout drunk by accident, yeah. that was after like two weeks of editing. It was that insane. You have to get your tickets at momenthouse.com slash good for you. April 17th, 6 p.m. Pacific, Pacific Standard, Standard Time. Time. Easter will be over. You'll found your eggs. I love you guys. And back to the guest. For sure. Cool. Can I just jump around? Because I've Please. not talked about this pub at all publicly about the Will Smith thing. Have you talked about it so much already? N just a little bit, but uh, not since I've actually had time to like think on it. So I, I mean, whatever. You haven't talked about it on your podcast? No, I just haven't. I haven't had a comedian on. Like we haven't yeah. recorded since. Yeah. And it was the, I never also want to be one of those people that's like, let me give you my take to try to like get some clout from like something awful that happened. Or like, I, I don't need to, no one is like, Standing by, like, I have to, like, watch that with myself. I'm like, everybody's, like, getting so many likes on Instagram, giving their take. I guess I need to yes. get mine. And I'm like, no, I'll just, like. Oh, I was going crazy on Twitter that night. But then the next day, <sighs> uh, Gary Delabate from The Stern Show called. Like, I woke up in the, like, at 6 o'clock in the morning to go pee. And I saw my phone. And it was, like, Gary being like, hey, could you call the show? Like, <laughs> Yes, I mean, And I was uh, like, I just was like, why did I see? Do you ever get asked to do something? And you go, I got to do it. Because that's such, like, a great plat. Like, I, I can't yeah. say no to Stern. I just don't say no to Stern. But yeah, I'm also yeah. like. It would have been nice to just miss this because I don't know what I think yet. And I am I have a feeling I'm going to put my foot in my mouth. So yeah. I did say stuff on there that I, I'm glad that I stand by, but I am I have more opinions on it now. I, I guess to me, I have like a couple. Like I just like, I'm all obviously like what he did was disgusting. You know, as a comedian, I'm always going to like play. Here, the tweet I deleted, which I cannot <laughs> believe Twitter got me to delete a tweet, but I did it. It was maybe it just, it was about um like, of course, the guy that made a documentary called Good Hair is going to go after the bald chick. It was like something in that, that. was very huh? ironic. I know. Well, no, it's like, what did you think? Of course, you know, it was like something in that. It was just like on so many levels. Like, like the more I think about it, the more fucked up it gets. Where were you when it happened? Were that you watching? That is so funny. Mm -hmm. I was not watching. No. It's I was like not the new Where I know. Were You Where when were you? it went Where down. Were you? Yeah. Which is so annoying because Last that's a Chris night, Rock joke. Where yeah. were you? Oh my God, that's so true. <laughs> yeah. Last night I was uh, at the store and Mark Maron was like, I was watching it live and I was like, lot. Like, I'm like, <gasps> some people saw it live and I didn't see it live, but I think I kind of went like, <laughs> if I saw it live, I would have thought it was fake. There's no way I would have been. I, uh, I don't know what I would have thought. I think the muting where it went muted that would have led me to believe that it was not fake i can't play it back because chris like seeing him not be scared at all because the likelihood of that happening was Who so impossible that chris is like what are you doing man like hey like when you think about like the number of steps he the number of mm -hmm. steps he had to change his mind to like back out of it to turn it into like a noogie or like mm. a, I came up here angry but like and I'll do a fake slap or like oh, a fake yeah. like you you know what I mean it could have like a lot of bad decisions yeah made. the person that just was mm. in 20 minutes gonna win the best actor award couldn't it's act crazy. like he had his shit together in that moment like so I don't think we can even does anyone remember that he won best actor I mean like that was completely eclipsed by this like it it was an app it was an after here's the, I, here's the that thing was a I, huge deal for I don't Will Smith to win best actor wild right that already is like so that would have been so exciting without all this like that would have been such a cool moment Will Smith are Will Smith yeah like huh? yeah, like, oh, you know what Men I, in I, Black I, Fresh Prince uh, he's Academy Award winning that is an alternative actor. universe that is string theory yeah. like an alternative reality no my mind didn't even realize what we lost. Yes. Like we that moment. Yeah, that's crazy. Will Smith, summer, summer, summer time. We, like, where were you? So tell me wh wh how it went down for I you. I was, uh, well, I am in a 
see, okay, so I identify as an addict. We all know that. I am addicted to Ozark in a way that okay. is like I'm driving. I'm watching it driving. <laughs> like, are you I, rewatching it or no? Nope, like, didn't watch you, it the you first time. It. Oh, so got it. here's the thing. So the <laughs> same way, if I were to uh, be a drug user, I know that when I do drink, sometimes I'll go. I'm gonna skip dinner so it hits harder. Like I don't. Oh, you want to feel it? Oh, harder. I'll feel it harder. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Ozark, I was like, I'm going to wait. Like, the only thing mm. better than Ozark is Ozark back to back now. to back to back. And, yeah. like, not having to wait between and seasons. And not having to hear people talk about it. And, okay. like, sort of, like, I just, I watched Mad Men in December. What? It was, if Isn't you thought it, it was great? good 10 years ago, now, oh my it's God. so much better. Wait, so. I like to sit on shows. You were watching Ozarks while going, driving through an intersection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fully. Like, totally. I'm driving one. Oh, yeah. So I was addicted to Ozark. And then my friend Nick comes in and is like, dude. And I was like, what? And he's like, you got to watch the Oscars. And I'm like, when has anyone said that in the last 10 mm -hmm. years? And he's like, I'm telling you, trust me, this is wild. And it, he was like careful to show it to me. I was like, did someone fall? Like, what? Did someone say the N word? Like, yeah. you know, and he showed it to me. And I just had this pit in my stomach. And I've had a pit in my stomach since. Yeah. It's. I, I've had a lot of, time, obviously we've had, how long has it been? Um, a week a and week a half. A week and a half, yeah. I feel what I've determined, and this is just obviously speculation, is that I, I, Will Smith, obviously he is someone with, uh, that deeply in pain. Hurt people hurt people, we all know that. But I think that what was, ev what was, what was on the other side of that look he got from his wife was more threatening to his, yeah. you know, happiness mm. than what, he was going to do up there to to Chris Rock. So he had a dis two decision, you know, he had a decision deal with this, which could be who knows what that could be. A month of 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 getting iced out at home. Cuz here's what I'm thinking her about going off and doing things to hurt me. Like I'm fascinated by like because it seems like there was a history there, you know, like with like Chris had made jokes about him before. Like just as comedians like who's our Will Smith in 10 years, who's going to be like, enough, Nikki, enough, yes. Whitney. Like, that's the last straw. Like, I'm I just think like, he was really is, his anger towards her I think mine is Chris Angel. projected up there. What? <laughs> I feel like one day Chris Angel is just going to come up to me and be like, fuck you. And I'm like, what? Well, you're like, not going to see it coming. No, it's just I didn't realize how many times I've made fun of him. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm also not going to see him coming because I could probably never get him hard or to come. But that's a different story. Ta da! I did see a poster of him in Vegas and I go, do you, are you doing, is this a, are you serious I get with this? <laughs> Do you want people to take those, you seriously? Those are the people that lose their minds. Like, dude. Mind I'm freak. telling you, he's like I'm putting on that Urban Decay eyeliner every morning. Oh my god! And like means it. So my thing is like I feel like there's when we make people punchlines, like it's just we're putting a target on our back for yes. those people to snap. And it's I, a good. I think who do that we need to stop making fun of? I feel like I don't. Uh, I don't know. I feel like honestly, my uh, myself. Like I need to still uh, like stop being mean because I'm going to get myself and I don't know. Like because I feel like that's yeah. the person that I always like. Bu like sometimes I really feel like I like bully myself. Like try to come up with the meanest thing that I would like cyber bully with. Like I'll or I'll imagine people are going to say that I don't read comments anymore. But what I imagine that I would write if I was a sicko and wanted to like get like that's what I'll come up with like what would could they say about me and then all of a sudden I'm like formulating these well isn't that kind of part of what I think spelled like all caps locked I think being a comedian it's like I'm gonna hurt myself before you can hurt me yeah. You're, I'm gonna say the worst thing about, so that you can't I mean it's like the quote I love of uh, being a comedian is uh, we did it to control how we're embarrassed like oh, I'm just yeah. gonna embarrass myself and control the situation yes. but I mean like punchline I just feel like we watched a, gr a man break Yes. Like break. Yeah. And it was like, you know, making fun of people. It is like all fun and games until society is on the like hinge of collapse and people yeah. just start like breaking down. And I just think it's so funny to think about like all those people out there that are walking punchlines that we're just like, oh, how do we think this is going to end? <laughs> uh, it, it is. Do you think that the seating had anything to do with this? Like, you know how they used to be seated in rows? Like, if he had to go, like, excuse me, oh, and, like, get that through is people, so over the climb of, like, really, Roberto Benini over it, people. <laughs> It would have been like it maybe. was a straight shot. I it mean, was. it was incredibly direct. But God, I just like to watch, and I haven't processed this with anyone yet, right? Because I'm sure I'm gonna like, you know, it, it's just so incendiary. I mean, we did on the Good for You Instagram page. 
uh, we did a photo of Jada Pinkett Smith and it was like, get your wife's name out of your mouth. And then it said Jada's mouth. And it was like a million hot dogs. Oh in my her God. Mouth. I, re- I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we talk. Ugh, I feel bad talking about Will Smith, Chris Rock stuff now. I think we have empathy for both sides. We, we admit that we don't know the full story. It made us feel sad. We are, we're not <laughs> acting like victims. We're not acting like this is. Like someone last night referred to it as like the 9-11 of comedy. And I was just like, <laughs> let's easy. Jesus. Like comedians, Jesus we need to be a little Christ. less self-important about of like. Course. But, but it, I was think, a, it was just a weird, sad moment. I, it felt like a fever dream. I like to go like, what are the takeaways? Just really quick. I think something that I hear a lot from people, which by the way, my number one pet peeve right now is when you say something and on Twitter, everyone will be like, not the take. You're like, I don't. Not the take. Not the take. That What's, just like made me feel so much shame just even hearing oh, not the take. Oh, you know like, the take, Taylor. Taylor. When I go to your bio on Twitter, it's like proud dad. Not the dad take. of Lola and Olivia. Why is like, that such a shameful phrase not that the take. makes me really just want to. But why do I then go, oh my God, you're right. It's not. I'm like, what? Head like, for the I fake didn't news. sign up to have the takes. Yeah, I signed up to make the jokes. Yes, Jim and Pan. I also I get it wrong. Okay, it's not the take. Well, okay, Don't, this little like passive aggressive, not the take. Like, there's a better way to tell me. Can I'm you wrong. imagine if comedians always were right? Like, what is fun in that? Do you know what I mean? Like, it just is like I'm Absolutely. just here to be the silly goose. Yes, and so not the take drives me nuts. So I'm Ugh. trying to not say. But do like, you think that we're gonna get more people trying to punch us on stage and like assault us? Do you think that's going to be a thing? Because I I do. I think in general, what I'm going to say is I think that it's not just a comedian thing. I think it's everybody's at their breaking point. Mm-hmm. And I think we're not designed for this kind of fame. We're not designed for this kind of uh, social media feedback. Will Smith, when he signed up to be famous, the first 30 years he was famous, there was no one being like, hey, so what's up with your wife cheating on you? Like, you could do that stuff uh, in private. Yeah. The idea of being that famous with that many people knowing your business and feeling the kind of mass emasculation on that scale. I don't think human beings are designed for it. And I think we watched Will Smith. We watched, a, I think we will look back in 50 years and go, remember when we let famous people read their social media? <laughs> remember when we let famous we people- We lost so many good ones remember, because we let them read We them. just let, remember when we let celebrities- Smoking on planes. Yeah, it's And gonna then be... read their comments. You know, it's like, we just see, like, remember when, like, someone would put out a movie and someone would go, like, you didn't cast an autistic person to play an autistic person? Cancel. Like, it's just like, we, and we just let someone read all that feedback. Like, mm-hmm. I think that, like, you know, famous people, it's hard because they have so much money, it's hard to have any compassion for them. And they ask for it. You know what you were getting in, into. You know what, no, but, you like, don't. They, but that Hasn't, hasn't anyone ever gone into something and thought it was going to be some way? And, yeah. And, uh, just a regular person that says that that goes you're famous and you, this is what you wanted you knew what you were getting you're you're putting yourself out there we get to judge you I didn't know it was going to be like but this I didn't know it would feel like this job. So you relate like, to that so Will Smith has done, who's done these all these amazing <laughs> movies whatever like if he has a dud if he has a clunker of a movie we're like clunker bomb in what job at H&R Block when a job goes wrong there are people like you fucking bomb that like, like you would go yes. to human resources like this is the only job where it's like people can talk to you like that it's so funny uh, david spade was talking about his member his hollywood minute was on snl that that Loved bit it. he used to do that was the only he was talking about he was like there was no making fun of celebrities back then ever it was just like yeah. Only glorifying them. That is it. There was no... He was the only... That was the first time. And now that is most of the noise about celebrities. Is, but here's what I'll say. And that. these are also people... It's hard to feel sorry for celebrities. I get it. But these are people that are like emotionally stunted that basically went... I just want strangers to love me. Yeah, I want to disappear into other identities. <laughs> we didn't know so that, that people that wouldn't strangers like us. We love we'd be the me. Exception. This is a very psychologically fragile person already. <laughs> Okay, yes. already. These are like, I mean, I think a lot of like big actors and people that got famous young, like you do kind of freeze at the age you became f- famous. I believe that. And then you're like, you have to kind of be a child in a lot of ways. You know, you get things brought to you all the time. Like just the idea of consequences just go out the window. I'm not having sympathy for people that have been enabled this long, but it's just the idea that we just like let them loose <laughs> <laughs> and like let them read their comments. You know, I don't know. I just, I don't think that human beings are designed for fame. If we're middle not, schoolers or like that's cyberbullying. Like, there's also a lot of, and getting, everyone's famous in their own way. If you're in Pensacola and you have 10,000 followers, you're famous. If you're the local weather girl, yeah. like fame doesn't oh, yeah. have to mean 70 million people. I mean, there's a lot of evidence that points to like, we're not designed for mirrors. Oh, right. There are no mirrors in nature. Yes. Zero. Like, we're not designed to see ourselves. Until movies, there was... That's what's so captivating about movies is because 
evol- evolution, I don't know the word for it, evolutionarily, we have never been able to be that close to a human's face without them seeing us. It is bizarre. It is insane. Mm-hmm. There's never been a time where you could stare at someone's face that close and see them the only time and they you would, don't know. The only time you would be that close to a human, Gavin DeBecker talks about this, is the only the reason there's so many like dangerous parasocial relationships now with celebrities and people thinking they're in relationships with them. Like, you know, it's getting it's, to a, it's as if you were the, in a relationship. The only time you would ever get that close to anyone is if you were about to kiss them. Yes. You know, you see their laugh lines, you see their pores. Like, it really, you know, and so um, I, I do think we will look back and go like, okay, when a famous person will protect famous people more. I mean, when you think about the amount of people that have died, whether it's like, it's like Amy Winehouse and Heath Ledger, like when yeah. you said those people are dead, dude. That's like I was watching the Whitney Houston documentary and oh I was like, God. we are blood on all our hands because mm-hmm. then it becomes a punchline. Like every talk show host is like, yeah, because she does crack and she's a crackhead and she's a this. It's like mm. you look back at the way we treated like Britney Spears and these people and you're oh, just like we almost lost her. That was real close. You're like, this is I know they're rich, but that is what we're all telling ourselves to get away with like really gross behavior towards other we're human just beings. as um. Uh, you know, guilty as that girl who like, you know, texted the guy, get back in the car and kill yourself. Like that's what adults cyber bully other adults, but they get away with it. If you were a middle schooler doing that, you'd be kicked out of school. Like cyber, kids are protected from cyber bullying, but celebrity, yeah. we're all like I'm children, not, I'm stunted like, I'm children not saying, getting like, to help people tell us. People tell me to kill myself all the time. People tell me like the worst things about, they, they you know, that, and I'm not, but I asked for it because I, I, I'm a celebrity. But I think that <laughs> there, we are a little bit at the brink. So, like, to answer your question about the the our comedians going to get hit more and all that kind of stuff, like, mm. who knows? I do think everyone's on the brink. Like, we were just in Dallas. Like, a, a fight just broke out in Dallas, like, really? at the end of the show. I think everyone's just at their last fucking nerve. Yeah. I think that after the pandemic, everyone's living through their phone vicariously. You have all the control in the world. You only get things now we're marketed. really opening up and people can't handle no, it. No, you only get marketed things that you want to buy. You only see news that you want to see. You only oh, follow and people. So when you see something that you don't want. And then you go out in public and you can't control any of this. That's like my fear about all the metaverse stuff and all this thing where you get to control your world. You live on video games and then you go out in the world and you can't control people's behavior and you're like, oh my God. We're so desensitized to anything unpredictable happening that's a, listen that is the take i like that like i think we're just these feral animals take. and like our nature is co- i mean this guy basically was just like trying to get out of the aisle and some he got too close to this guy and he just knocked him out i think we're all at like peak Oof. like and i think what we saw with will was like a confluence of a lot of that but i do think it's like people are just going to start breaking more and more yes just losing their shit like this whole illusion of like civilized society i feel like is just know, kind of starting to fall better. apart uh, yeah 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 and this this was the first sign of it. The slap I, I at the Oscars gonna, was like, oh, that was that was it. That's when things started to get really weird. Which is also weird when we're like, okay, we watch all these celebrities die and overdose and kill themselves and hang themselves, and we're like, but that is the thing where we were like, yeah, this is wild because it's the Oscars. That does not. That, I mean, maybe the Golden Globes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like <laughs> not the maybe Oscars. the Razzies. Yeah. <laughs> but it was. I also think that Chris like won't really talk about it that much. Weirdly, no. like everyone's like, when's he going to talk about it? I'm like, it's not even. No, no, no. If I'm him, I'm never like the idea that the physical harm, like all that, but the idea that you like this is like Chris Rock is such a great comedian that I think he'll be able to like you know, obfuscate this with great work after this. But the idea that it's like, you just made my legacy about this. I know. That's the shame. It's like, this is... And here's one thing I will say. What I did, I just did... thing that's ever I just happened. did like a corporate... Every time I'm Googled, this will come up. Mm-hmm. Like, you did that. Yes. Like, you embarrassed me, did I, and you took my Google searches forever. For, that is That is his mark. Like, that to me is just, like, the most fucked up shit you can do. People um, that are like, well, why did he come after his wife and da-da-da? If you're walking into a situation where you understand that comedians are going to be making jokes and you're one of the most famous people in the world in a weird-ass relationship that everyone's always made fun of, chances are, like, you might get made fun of. Yes. And I did this corporate gig recently where I was, like, doing this roast and Paris Hilton was there and she texted me before and she was like, can you not make fun? Like, can I just see? Like Good for her. Literally, she goes Great. like, I go, let me send you the joke right now. It was like about her. And like Love her, it. It wasn't her at her expense at all. It was like, you know, but I was like, 
I am so fucking proud of you. That is so fucking punk rock. I sent her the joke. She's like, oh my God, thank you. She was just like, I don't, I know what I'm walking into. I that know. That girl has been working on herself. That's like, that's something that a healthy person does. I know like, who I am. This is what I need. I know who you are. I know the situation. I'm, I can read context clues and I'm just going to be an adult and send you a message. Yeah. So it's like, if Will Smith knew he was walking, he could have been like, hey, Chris. Yeah. Could you be easy on us tonight? Like it, you could. It, it could have gotten to the writers and it would have been a note that everyone had to heed of like, don't go there. Just like, hey, I know the situation We've I'm walking been in into. Situations. We know when things are off limits and we have to abide by those and we don't go, actually, I'm going to go hard. Like, we're not cruel It people. was just like, I just literally, when that happened, when I was like, oh, maybe he got hit sideways and da, da, da. And I was like, no, like it is just, the comedians never want to hurt anyone. It's just like the idea that people are like being so hard on comedians now and we're like, Remember, like, five years ago when the stereotype is we were, like, mentally ill and depressed and all suicidal and, like, we're all crazy and fragile and now you guys are just, like, hitting us? <laughs> I, like, it, we, like, we are... When people are ever like, oh, whoa, are you going to roast me? Like, I'm scared of you. I'm always like, I, I, you have, I'm the opposite of that. That is just me, to like, writing. Those yeah. are, like, jokes are, like, math problems. I'm not, like, those aren't. There's truth behind them, but yeah, yeah. It, this has, I do not think of that way. And like, this joke about you has nothing to do with you. Nothing to do it's with you. It's just a good joke. I know, and I'm not like that at all. It just that is Rose has kind of, and I'm sure you have it too, have given yeah. me like this kind of reputation that I I cannot live up to of being like a ball buster. I'm going like to start doing. Girl. I think if the I, I'm not sure if the deal is going to happen or not, but um, I'm going to start doing. On uh, I remember over the pandemic, I remember being like, I have this weird superpower of writing Rose jokes that I can never use. Yes. I feel like anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's just like sitting on the bench here. And uh, and so I was like, God, you know where you can do roast now? I was like, OnlyFans. Like, I was like, there's videos of like dirty videos and dirty photos. I'm like, what if there's a place where it's like dirty jokes that you can't tell anywhere else? And wow. so I might start doing little roasts on OnlyFans. That's so fun. Yeah, because it's also you can't go through a paywall going to OnlyFans and then be like, you're punching down. It's like, you're here. You, yes. We're down in the mud. We're all in the fucking mud. You don't get to say that I'm like, you know, any of this is problematic. Yes. Like, we know what this is. I guess it's just too serious to joke about or whatever. Like, I didn't realize, you know. Oh, really? Yeah. You it did just, not? Oh, okay. Well, it's like, if you criticize their marriage, you're coming after a black woman. If you criticize, it's just like, it's so incendiary. And I think a yes. lot of people are just like, white people shouldn't insert themselves in this. Mm -hmm. But it's also like, as comedians, I feel like it's, you you know, we should be able to talk about what happens when someone assaults a, a comedian on stage. Yeah. I mean, there there was a lot of that that night of like, white people need to sit this one out. Like, yeah. I read that a lot. And as soon as I read that, I go into like, fuck. Like, I, you're, you're right. Like, I yeah. just always assume they're right because wh who am I to say that they're not right? Like, it's kind of a, a statement that you get and you go, I really don't have any. But I also want to go like, hey, Scientology is a white person problem. <laughs> so I feel like you, you need Are to sit they? this one out. Scientologists. I mean, did they come out and say they weren't? Like, it, I don't know the history of that. I mean, it's pretty. It's no one will say it because no one will say it. But yes, I'm not mm. worried. The Scientologists come fucking at me, dude. I'll <laughs> stick my robot on you. Do, like you think you guys are oh fucking my God. crazy? I'm not afraid of Scientology. Really? At all? I am. You guys are Co cool. What are, What are you gonna do? <laughs> By the way, you guys are totally like, <laughs> fine. <laughs> what are you gonna fucking do, dude? The problem is, here's what I realized: comedians are invincible. You can't humiliate me. You can't embarrass me. What are you gonna fucking That's do? A really good point what I are you gonna so do to me grateful that's how they we well, that's can't how Scientology stays uh, powerful is yes. that it has people's secrets yeah and it bribes them and says well i'm gonna tell everyone you're yeah, gay you if you don't. you're gonna to take money sue me i guess you audit like they basically stole from 12 step programs like you reveal all your secrets and that's how you're gonna have grace and all this kind of stuff but like they're just like letting kids die of seizures like i'm not and i don't fuck all, with you guys because we'll tell people you're gay and then you won't get in movies anymore. Why? By the Even way, though everyone being gay already knows is the you're only gay. way to get into movies. I right know, now. <laughs> but they're still they're I think they keep them like, like they they keep it like the eighties in there, yeah. like where that would have been ruining your career. All the guys that they have that they're keeping these gay secrets on are conditioned yes. to think that, that will ruin their careers. Even though it would be great for. The men, the three men I'm mainly talking about, like the the ones we all know. Yeah, it's allegedly. just so. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. On the other hand, sometimes I'm like super pro Scientology because I'm like, if you're susceptible to this, like, please be locked in a building because if you weren't <sighs> doing this, every, I think people are so susceptible to brainwashing so and like, interesting. it's just, I feel, I, I agree with you of like, okay, bye. 
Like, yeah, like get good. If you think this is a good idea, maybe stay in there because who oh knows God. what else you think is a good idea. Yes, yes. But I also feel like everyone thinks they're not susceptible to brainwashing when we kind of already are in yeah. certain ways, in different ways. And like so many family members have been lost to like Fox News of people that were like, he used to be like saint. Like wow. that's a type of brainwashing. Thing. It's, I mean, we, I had this uh, neuroscientist on the podcast the other day and I actually thought of you because he was like, we're going to look back in 50 years and you'll get canceled if there's like a photo of you like eating meat. Oh or like yes. stuff like that. Yes. Or like what are the things I we're doing we now? Yes. Like I feel like even just now talking about like, oh, people's brains were just wired that way. We shamed people that wanted to jerk off in public. We were like, ew, like the yeah. idea that we look, we'll probably look back at that one day, the way that we look at the way they like had children working in factories. We're like, oh my God, we can't believe we ever treated people like that. It's, well, I'm kind of like, I don't shame people for, like I actually do think that no one chooses, we don't have free will. I, I 100% think that and I know it because I've read enough about it and it's a freaky concept but no you know because we're in a simulation i don't know about that I yet don't. <laughs> i haven't been on rogan since he moved to austin but no, i don't know <laughs> i what i do know is that when the, you know the argument that i always like to to talk about is when you know someone does like a mass shooting or something and they they kill them and they do an autopsy on their brain and they're like this guy was normal what happened they yeah. they open him up and they go oh my god he had a tumor that was pressing on his amygdala this mm -hmm. makes sense that's why this guy did it but truthfully anytime any anyone does anything it's because something's going on in their brain yeah. yet we excuse it when we can see it but most of the time we cannot see it but no one wants to be i'm not excusing this behavior yeah. no one wants to be a pedophile yeah. no one if you were given a choice and i know that it you seem it 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 there's a part of me that obviously does not have sympathy for those people because but there is a part of me honestly that thinks i wish that they had a place to go so they could go listen i'm attracted to kids and i haven't done anything about it sure. please help me because there's nowhere to go for and them. i'm gonna no of course not and it's like you know i mean look you go and you get shamed people go oh you're disgusting and they take you to jail i mean there's a place to go for them it's called prison yeah you know <laughs> You guys, I, 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 I don't know how many times I have to say this. <laughs> I'm getting sick of repeating myself. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I am not. I, if there's anything I hate doing, it's repeating myself. Mm -hmm. And I won't mm -hmm. do it again. Okay. And I am sick of talking mm -hmm. and saying this. Because <laughs> there's nothing I hate more than talking mm -hmm. mm. and giving talk. my opinions and lecturing mm -hmm. you guys on how to make <laughs> the same choices I make. So <laughs> I've said it for a year and a half now. Mm -hmm. I've told you I take ritual vitamins. Mm -hmm. Do you, are you deaf? <laughs> are you just not listening? Are you just trying to make a point? Is this a prank? Are you mental? I've said this a thousand times. <laughs> I've said it. I'm not going to say it again. All right. If you two want to say it, you I'll can. I'll say it. I'll say it because I've only said it Because boundaries are times. for us. Ritual is essential for women 18 plus multivitamin was formulated from exhaustive research to help fill nutrient gaps in the diets of 18 women and plus. ages 18 plus. Mm -hmm. It is formulated with nutrients to help support brain health, bone health, blood health, and provide antioxidant support. But Ritual did not stop there, did no, they, Grace? No, no. They what, wouldn't dream what of What did they do? Mm -mm. They invested in gold standard university-led clinical trials to prove the impact of their essential for women 18 and up multivitamin, which is also just gorgeous. And right now, Ritual is offering my my I'm listeners. I'm thinking it. I'm beaming Ritual's it offering, offering my <laughs> listeners <laughs> okay. 10% off your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash Whitney. And turn healthy habits into a ritual. That's 10% off at ritual.com. It so, they're my listeners it slash be, Whitney. It would be so funny that the day you tried to just like take over this whole business, you were like, I'm cutting bangs. <laughs> Like this My is hair the, is purple. You do have the time you, is now. You did yeah. when a bitch just shows up with bangs out of nowhere. Like <laughs> something happened. Now I know what you listeners are thinking mm. while you watch this. Grace's this is listeners? this is Grace's <laughs> listeners My are listeners. thinking. This is a well organized, well fueled, organized machine which must have some type of workflow mm. organization, and it's true. We use Monday.com mm -hmm. because it's an operating system and platform where anyone can easily create or customize work software. Because you know what? I I had a system that I thought was working, mm -hmm. which was just thumbs up a text. <laughs> 
And I, it just didn't stick for some reason. It didn't stick. And no, we needed software. Yeah. And Monday.com yeah. lets us save hours of time so Whitney can focus more on creative work mm-hmm. and things that make you laugh than like endless work processes, i.e. thumbs up texts. Right. Well, yeah. And it's also just a very smart thing to do because I think when you're running a business, the, the t- tensions come up when there's people have different work mm-hmm. styles and there's not expectations in place. This takes away all the awkward yeah. conversations, the weird sensitivities. I mean, uh, the one time I tried to set a workflow, mm-hmm. uh, it was... The tears flowed. There were, I made sandwiches. It was a, I I did, I tried to do a peanut butter jelly exercise. Like it just, if Monday.com had been around two years ago, mm. I very much feel like we'd all look two years younger. But Emily's still upset about it. With Wait. Monday.com, we can customize our workflows to reflect exactly the way. You can't be mad in a shirt that says hydrate and masturbate. our team to get work done. See, like I can assign certain tasks to people. Yeah, For Whitney, right. I'm like, stop making fun of me. For Grace, I'm like, get bangs. And then it gets done. We collaborate in one place. And we for get- you, we say hydrate and masturbate. <laughs> and then I put it on my t-shirt. We collaborate in one place. We get real-time notifications uh, By the way, when something's your done. Your neck is turning red. Where was that sweatshirt? <laughs> I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm like, I don't think that sweatshirt was a quality item. I'm starting to think that maybe that was not a quality mm. made item and now you're putting it on your face. This was a gift. Okay. Uh, with Monday.com. <laughs> From your enemies. <laughs> Do they put small box in it? Was that a small box blanket? It's asbestos just loose in the car. <laughs> you're going to miss me. Um, but you know what? They, they probably managed to get that done and... <laughs> With Monday.com, we can track our progress and get real-time results, and we just keep killing See, we it. See, there's like a note section in ours, and it's always like reminders to do. And Emily's is just like, quit it. Find another job. <laughs> two weeks. Two weeks. Press two charges. weeks. Press All charges. about rosacea. Quit. To start your free two-week trial, go to Monday.com slash podcast. That's Monday.com slash podcast. Okay, April 13th and April 14th, I'm going to be in La Jolla, California doing La Jolla Comedy Store. I'm going to be running my new hour special, all new material. Come see me complain about things that really aren't that big of a deal. April 22nd, I'm going to be in Portland, Oregon at the Arlene Schnitzer Concert Hall putting on a concert. Uh, May 20th, I'm going to be in Tyson's Corner, a Capital One Hall. It's just the show's just in the hall. Um, June 26th in the Toronto area, I will be in the Danforth Music Hall. And now back to our guest. I was working on this bit to try to like defend pedophiles because it was just like the <laughs> idea. I'm not... <laughs> I've been working on that same bit and let me tell you how's it going? Let's see if we That's can... That's a rocky terrain. You know what? Let's see if we can crack this today. Um, so, well, I guess my thing was like if I see like a like I love little things like mini like oh alcohol bottles. Oh, this <laughs> this is a hilarious approach. Oh my god! Like little lighters. Like I love tiny things. Uh-huh. And like whenever I go to like the mini bar and they have like a tiny like Maker's Mark, like I that have is to have it. So funny. So I like I, if like if you go to so that you can but I give don't it to touch them or open so them or put my mouth on them so I guess that's <laughs> the difference but I like love tiny things like yeah that like, makes sense I need this but do you want to fuck them well I want to like touch it and like this is like a little tiny that figurine that's the word for labyrinth that means that so much cute. to me and if I just saw this in the street I would definitely <laughs> try to figure out how to get in my car. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, you would. Just, just, you are grooming it right now. You were just it. grooming. Like, it. I would. If you. If you were like, you might lose Petting your career it. if you touch that. I'd be like. I might. Yeah. That is. Look at it. That is. That's you know Louis C.K.'s bit about like. I mean, fucking kids must be like great because they like they risk everything <laughs> to do it. It must like I'm not. I don't want to do it, but like it but must be amazing. amazing. Like sure, that's and- a great bit about about molestation because I feel like I haven't been molested to that I know of. Like it could have happened. Like a lot of times, molestation happens when you're a baby before you can remember and you can hold on to that trauma and you mm-hmm. don't know. So I don't want to say that I haven't. Not to my knowledge, I have not been. And it's uncomfortable that I'm not able to talk about it because if I were molested, I could be like, hey, I I've been molested, so I can talk about this. But I do believe that pe- we need to talk comedy i don't want to make jokes at the expense of people that have been molested ever 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 i think that's the other thing is like i'm feeling so like profoundly unfunny right now i know this is, just like in, in general like in general, general. Right now or in general yeah yeah like oh I my just, god i go through stages like that so much and yeah I'm, I'm with you girl i don't know i just i do think the will smith like slap it did make me feel a little bit like you know i mean to watch like 
ah, it's just so hard to fucking talk about. Just that the, you know, one of the best comedians in the world was just like treated like that. And, you know, it just, I just, it's just weird to think that we are some of the most revered in a lot of ways, people. I think yeah. people like, we're like zoo animals. They like respect us, but not enough to like treat us like equals. <laughs> That's, I mean, the Oscars would be unwatchable without comedians. There's, what do you, what do you, what would, yeah. what would be watchable about that? Watching s- actors pretend to have personalities by reading jokes written for them by comedians off a teleprompter yeah. and then sometimes flubbing it and that's where you see a little bit of humanity. Yeah. There's nothing watchable about the Oscars unless there's singing and dance. Like, yeah. the Grammys is watchable. That's entertainment. Actors, aside from the movie clips you see, there's nothing watchable about that without comics. Yeah. That's why I went to so bed. True. Amy and, and Wanda and Regina were done for the night. I was like, okay, all the comedy's done. I went to bed and that's why I got woken up with like, oh my God, did you see it? Like, and then, and then, and then I had to get out of bed and I go, really get out of bed. They're like, get out of bed. And go look at what just happened. And what happened when you saw it? Did you think it was fake at first? No, I thought it was real just because of the they the, the sound went out. And yeah. I was like, no one knew about this. And just the way Chris Rock looked so scared and didn't know what to, he didn't have some good comeback. It was just but I do think that when Will Smith walked up there, he didn't know what he was gonna do. Like I really compare it to when you're like driving in a car maybe like a, there's a crash in front of you and you're like mm. do I brake do I press on the brakes or do I steer like which one is gonna be the least painful so he looked at Jada and then he looked at uh, Chris Rock and he knew he had to either deal with that or deal with Jada and he goes oh, okay the least painful is this so he starts walking <laughs> to the stage the least painful is ruining your entire career that's why I'm saying I think on the other end of that stair is a lot of abuse that we don't understand and it will never come out but I don't know about you but I have been in How situations I- with people where the person that might be mad at you if when they get that look in their face and you don't make it right right away that is months of punishment in a way that is so hurtful whether physical or emotional of ignoring of just just a punitive vibe and she calls the shots in that house i'm not saying i'm not and listen if she's if she's a nightmare to be around i also like it's probably her own uh, something happened to her that made her that way like yeah. i'm not putting the blame on really anyone mm-hmm. here but i'm just saying that I saw a man laugh at a joke, which you know he can he can change his mind about a joke. It's fine that he laughed, but I saw he made a he made a choice because of that look that she gave yeah. him. Then he walks to the stage, and then he goes, "Okay, so I have two choices here. My choices are say something to him or slap him." And I see he, what a that's, he's the Muhammad Ali other- of 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 words. You're yeah. not gonna go toe to toe with Chris Rock with yeah. words. So he goes, "Okay." I'm going to go with the one that's like, I'm not going to look as stupid. If Chris Rock, were bad choices, but those were his choices. If I was in Chris Rock's situation and Will Smith slapped me like that, I would have. What would I, you? Yeah. Well, first. What do you think you would have done? Because well, first we don't of know. all, getting slapped in the face in front of millions of people is the only way I can come. So I, I, I like, <laughs> how did you know? Number two, I think I would be like, hey, Will, that's not how I thought you were going to come out as gay. But here we oh, are. Oh, my God. What was oh that my God. Broadway slap? <laughs> The, what that stage combat, you fucking dork. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, do you? It was like such a like Neil LeBeau, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Cherry oh Hill Theater God. slap. It's like a Lee Strasberg joint. Cherry Hill Theater. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I just was like, you play back and it's like, boo, it's so uncomfortable. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, it was like I Shakespeare in the park. Done. Do you deal a lot with, um, because people are always like, how do you take on hecklers? And I just don't. I don't deal with them. Oh, interesting. I do not. I do not go, go at them. I sometimes I feel like they're positive right. Positive ones now, right? I mean, aside people that come to see you, I feel like there's there was during like the Trump eras, like when yeah. things when I was doing clubs and stuff, and yeah. people would come because they saw me on roast, and then they go like, uh, yeah. I I used to like you because I'd say one. Th- I'd like mention that Pence calls his wife mother or some some fact oh, like I'm yeah. not even and they just they um, were waiting to hear it you know they're just waiting yeah. for you to say something against their hat or here's what, what i believe say. with their hot hat. take if you are a man that is paying money to hear a woman talk for an hour and a half an hour an hour and a half yeah and you don't get to say anything or fuck her at the end, I think you are a radical feminist. <laughs> yeah. Even if you come to my show and call me a horrible cunt that you hate and storm out, I when when I'm like, 
still a feminist dude. I hate to break it to you, but you still paid money to hear me talk. You knew you were never going to fuck me. It's a really good point. It's I a tricky one. I'm like, like, still it. love you, man. <laughs> You're still really better funny. than most people who yeah. didn't come at all. Yes. Because they were like, women aren't funny. I'm like, you at least gave me a shot. Oh my God. I love that so much. Like, I just try to like stick with that. Like, it's the, really true. Like, the there are times that, where I'm like, oh, I can't, I see the men kind of just like not wanting to be there sometimes and just like so mad that they don't, that they have to listen to this woman. I, I see or maybe the that's what you're projecting onto them, you know, or yeah, they're they just, just like, have a hemorrhoid and have they're just to shifting in their or, seat. Yeah, they're like, or, okay, you know, yeah. like, or something. I, I don't know. I think for me, I, <laughs> you're right. I, for the most part, feel like I've helped people that think they're being helpful. Like, oh yeah. Like I'll be like, so the other day I went to Erewhon and they're like, and I'm like, and I'm like trying to sort of play a moment for comic timing or pacing or something. And someone's like, the, the mangoes. And I'm like, I got just oh my god that's why I don't take any pauses I'm so scared it's going to give the audience a time to like say something and that's why I talk blah, blah, blah. Like, oh that's I don't so interesting ever let up because I feel like there's so many comics I watch now that take their time mm -hmm. and sit in the, and I'm just I it makes me nervous because I'm like someone's gonna shout something there's gonna be some idiot that's like I love you you yeah. know like it's always gonna happen which that is way. but I feel like to me I I don't know I guess I'm so I get so sick of myself like in with these kind of tour schedules that we're doing right now I just am like so sick oh of my God. <laughs> that when someone heckles I'm like Please, like honestly, <laughs> yeah, I, I do the same thing. There is no way this is gonna go well, but I am gonna do the same thing over and over again, and expect a different result. After 15 years of doing this, I'm gonna throw uh, you the ball. Yeah, because like maybe you know, like maybe you're the one. Maybe maybe you're the one that should be up here. Yes. Maybe this is like you're like the I'm Ike and your team. I'm like pull someone out of the crowd. That's not what you think of immediately. But he did discover her like in a yeah crowd. yeah. And like or I'm like this person. I'll always be like it seems like you need to talk. Right. Get, like, let's go. Like, I, it doesn't have yeah. to be funny, but let's just, like, get it out. I'm it's starting to do that. I'm starting to be more comfortable with the fact of, like, I have this fail-safe plan now as a comic where I realized recently, like, whenever I'm bombing or I, maybe my set is taking a turn and it's not what I want it to be, I just stop and I go, what is, what's the most honest thing you can say? Yeah. Like, what, just say the truth, what you're feeling, and yeah. I'll be like, my pants are too tight. Or, yeah. like, yeah. I, a lot of you are regretting the money you spent tonight and <laughs> I will Venmo you for the babysitter for the extra 15 minutes I'm using to try to dig out of this hole. Like, just, you just stop and go, what's honest? Because yeah. that's, that's the ticket. All yeah, you have yeah, to always. do as a comedian is just, we have a gift of being honest and it's, it, it is it's kind of easy for us. Luckily, like it's comedy is not easy by any means. But in those moments, being that's where I just go to is the honesty. And a lot of times, though, I feel like it's always drunk people. And mm. I tend to go like, I hope this is like a bottom for you tonight. <laughs> like this. <laughs> no, I, they're going to be like last night. Nikki Glazer <laughs> spoke to me. I got to do that exact set of shots so again. Funny. That was the magic number. That was, <laughs> I always try to make it. That was a like, sign this is from God that I'm going in the right direction <laughs> with the Jacobs Creek, then the champagne. Yeah. Uh, what did I tell you? I'm like, please remember this. No. I know that you're on blackout <laughs> no, no, right no, now, no, but no. I want you like I'm talking to your subconscious mind. Remember this and know how embarrassing this is and get help because this isn't a good look and you're gonna lose friends no, no, no. I will get really weird I'll be like and I'll see you back at this church like one time I was before I get to church I was like I'll see you in the basement of this church tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. whereas that person woke up the next day and was like Nikki Glaser picked me out of a crowd. I mean, that is. By, by felt yeah, that's my, never gonna felt our connection. That would mortify. Were you ever, did you ever heckle? Have you ever been in a situation where you became that, per like, were too drunk you know and you, di you did that? You, you like, have empathy for hecklers because you've been that girl? I think that part of being a comedian is knowing on some level, like, you have Tourette's. And you're <laughs> yeah. like, I got to figure out a career that makes this seem like everyone's better, but she's a comedian. And like I there are times when someone will be saying like something like it, it's when things are when someone's number one, a bad plan. I can't allow a bad plan to go. And I can't. There's a couple things where I just cannot sit and listen. I what feel do you like, mean a, ba a bad like plan? Like a bad plan. If someone's like, okay, we're going to go to the beach. So why don't I come to West Hollywood and pick you up <laughs> and then you can drive back to Culver City and then I'll meet you. I'm like, I'm going to stop you right there. Oh, girl. Whereas like, I just, that's like my version of heckling when I'm like, let me stop you right there. Like, I, I get like really enraged. Tell me what to do because this is hitting something fresh for me that always comes up with you when, 
you know that book getting to I do yes. about feminine and masculine energy I, I am the dealing irony. with is this is what made you and I become friends it was I, I agree. it was the straw that broke the camel's back when I ran into you at the comedy store you were engaged at the time and I go what the hell did you do <laughs> What did you do to find a man to like you're in love? You you were really happy at the time and like uh, and I and you go I I read a book and mm-hmm. I was like and then uh, it that book really set some, I mean I talk about it in my upcoming HBO special Sweet. like I talk about that book that you recommended to me because but I'm hearing you right now and I am obsessed with bad plans too when I hear a bad plan and I know there's a better route I, get I just know how to make things very efficient just like you I have never needed to correct a plan with you because you have everything done very like. It's going to you think the same way I do. But when I am with like someone that I am dating and I see them have a bad plan and I want to go hold on a minute here and I need to save my feminine energy. How do you how do you keep that in? It's a tricky. Well, if you're dating the person, you have to let them do it. Yeah, I know. You have to follow the isn't bad that, plan. Isn't that nuts? Like yep. you'll be like driving somewhere and yep. you know that they're going to go 10 nope. minutes out of the way and you're late. But you just have to keep your mouth shut because Mm-mm. It's not going to be like, you need to go to this exit. Just let him pass the exit. Because you have to realize, let him pass the exit. Let him pass the exit. Because even if you say, oh, hey, here's the exit, that's not what they're going to hear. You're here like, you have a small dick and I've never come. And like, you know, there's no. That's so funny. It's not going to translate any way. But I said, that's not what he heard. It doesn't matter what you said. You're right. What the person heard is all the matters. That 10 all minutes matters- I would save by going off that exit, I'm going to lose with all the bullshit that this little remark is going to on the other end of it. That's yeah, such a good it's point. It's also just like, let him have it. Let Like, you get to have everything. Let him have it. It's like part of the reason, like, look at me being like pro straight guy. It's like when people are like, why does why do men have to overthink the proposal? and Because they never get to make any decision. Like it is true, you know? And they just let him have the exit. Let yes. him have the directions. Let him yeah. have, we are so, we are such bullies. Like, oh, we got you guys with your fucking directions and your fucking, yeah. good, your, your grill yes. and your fucking video games. <laughs> like we are so mean. Yeah, I, I agree. It's It's been quite a uh, a learning experience just biting my tongue when it comes to knowing a better way and mm-hmm. knowing that it is a, my way is going to be a better way i've done it many but times that's, but what's your but definition of better in faster, this scenario not being late but then you're going to be fighting the whole time and you're going to get there faster you're right and it's going to be tense and uncomfortable it's, it wasn't working for me and so i tried this way and i man i fought it and i did but not here's what it, get it's into not it. about not like i think people and myself included for a long time conflated uh, being in any way like docile or submissive as being weak. I think it's the ultimate form of strength to just go like, I know the better way, but I'm going to let you have this one because I surrender to human nature. And like, I now am ball, like man enough to realize that like in relationships, all that matters is impact. It's all that matters. What we go you? like, well, that wasn't my intention, but that was your impact. So it's like oh, in life right. when we're trying to separate your intention from your impact, like that's, you know, a big public conversation that I'm not getting into in relationships all that matters is impact (sighs) that's interesting because you're right like it's I the one thing that I have found what do you think of this is that men really want to make just they want to know that they're understood like Mm -hmm. they want to they you even if you're like yeah 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 I know like you got to let them say it so many times and just listen and then say it back to them like what I'm hearing is that this like and by the way like there have been so many times where I'm like I, I know I know what he's trying to say and I get it and I disagree with it but he's allowed to have his feelings and I'll let him say it and then suddenly but you after do the manga- fifth time that he said it I go whoa okay I was not actually having empathy I was sympathizing but I was not seeing it from his actual point of view and it took five times to get it and so it's really helped me to just really shut the fuck up uh, by the way you have by the time i was in like in al-anon for maybe like 10 12 years it's like your kind of addictions change like you know what we say like the para alcoholism like i'm addicted to control i'm addicted to perfection i'm addicted mm. to other addicts i'm addicted to mothering martyring micromanaging and i remember like eight years in i found i was like you guys i think i'm addicted to talking yeah like i can't stop like i explain, minimize, apologize. Like I, I literally will be standing next to someone I don't know in an elevator and I'm just like, hey, so these buttons are like crazy, right? Like I cannot <laughs> be in the silence. And then I think I was so not heard as a child or understood oh, that yeah. I'll say something and then I'll say it again a different way and then I'll say it again a different way when someone like clearly has got it. Yes. You know? Oh my God. Do you ever feel, do you ever get the sense as as a talky woman myself and a, a little chatterbox, do you ever sense when you're 
being a lot and you catch someone like looking at another person about you and you go, oh God, I'm that person. Like that is so embarrassing to me. And so many times in my childhood, I'd get like, just keep it down. Like just, st- no, just shh. Like give me an example, like in conversation. Or just like some, like so I'll just be talking and I'll be like really excited about something and I'm like, yes. And I'll be on like my little like soapbox about it and I'll just catch them, look at someone like, okay like where you just and you re- let that slide well yeah because i think i got that a lot as a kid where my parents didn't I mean, know what, what to do that? with me what was that oh really i oh. would go okay got it and i'm going to stop talking and su- shut up and like take this to um a lot of food later on alone in my room like it, it i will go like they're right because i think my earliest memory is like throwing tantrums or freaking out about something or like having a fabric on me that I was just like I hate socks and like not understanding like how to describe like what was making me so insane because my Barbie doll had weird hair and it wasn't perfect and I would just be like (sighs) like when things weren't perfect I would freak out and I would just see my parents go like Nikki you Mm. need to this is this is embarrassing and I'd see them like look at each other like Oh my! And those glances of like she's a problem that we can't even we can't even put into words. What's wrong with this girl? And she she's weird. They say one of the most traumatic things you can do to um, babies with like their bodies is when you're changing their diaper (laughs) to like like couples that are like ew it stinks. (gasps) Like you're like making a joke or you're just you know it's poop. But just the idea of like you're like new parents and you're like ah gross change the diaper. You know like even if you're joking, babies subconsciously are like oh something down there is like is making them laugh or making them go or making them like because they can read faces. Oh yeah, yeah, and and leave me alone. Yeah, I mean babies can see a picture of a spider and recoil because that's how deep it is in our like genetic which makes me have we talked about your ancestral trauma because I feel like there's like a lot there I, I am now believing in that stuff of like reading irrational like, fears or just yeah oh they I seem so irrational, irrational but they're not they are ancestors basically imprinted on their DNA so it's like you cannot refute that like you know the um uh that mice when they get not that I love that um there was testing on animals but it is what it is mm-hmm. I didn't do it uh just get out calm down uh so basically uh that uh mice when they were electrocuted every time they smelled a cherry blossom their offspring if they smelled a cherry blossom would run to the other end of the cage like oh, it's wow. that quick how it duplicates so like fear of heights like it's you know some people are just like irrationally afraid of heights i think everyone should be fucking afraid of heights i think it's weird if you're not but it's like it could mean that one of your ancestors you know fell off a cliff it makes absolute sense it's like in your recent what are your irrational fears mine well actually mine is more an irrational like sadness that Mm. comes up to me it doesn't seem irrational but it is um after i did my family constellation i kind of figured out what it was and family constellation is like pseudoscience so what were you saying about the constellation and the uh, the 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 family constellation so um, i cannot go to midtown in new york i don't go to I love New York City. I just cannot go there because of the horse carriages. It's oh, yeah. too stressful for it. Just I can't handle it. Um, and uh, it makes me like like violently enraged. And I'm like the crazy person like yelling at tourists and stuff. You, you've done that before. You've, oh, you've yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Because I I <laughs> try. I've negotiated with them to try to get horses out. I tried to get one of the horses out that was 32 years old. It was going to die at any minute. It's like it's very tricky because the guys that own their horses it's like cabs like they own the horse it's not you know what I mean so it's also their they see it as property it's like very hard to get between and they in some sick way believe they love this animal Mm -hmm. you know but um but so I would like when I would have to do Letterman or Tonight Show or whatever was like in Midtown like if I heard even the clapping I would I mean I had to I was gonna do the view I had to like push it to the next day because I was sobbing so uncontrollably oh, like I could like yes there's kids at the border there's people dying everywhere it's like I I, I can't I, it makes me so upset I remember one time I was with this guy I was dating and I was like uncontrollably sobbing because I, he promised me that the way the routes went we were like on the other side of the park and I would just wear noise canceling headphones like just as Whoa, I'm going through Whitney and so what so, is that so one time he like had to pull me into like a museum uh, because I was crying so much. I don't remember whatever is the one up on the Upper East Side I or whatever. I can't believe you had to go to And we go in and like oh. every painting is like a horse-drawn carriage. Oh my God. Like, no, no. no. And I'm like Christ, having a so total meltdown in this fucking museum. And um, I like how Bridgerton is like s- the movie Saw for you. I can't watch, I can't watch yeah. any movies with, I, I would love to, I hear Yellowstone's amazing. I just can't watch it. Yeah. So anything that has horses, like I, they're doing a better job. Like I'm working with a couple actors and 
directors right now on like how to have horses in movies in a way that's actually like humane and consensual. But yeah. like, I mean, the way that I mean, remember that Dustin Hoffman show where a couple horses died, the race horse. I mean, race horse. Yeah, racing is the worst thing um, you can possibly do. But they used to the way they used to, you know, they would tripwire horses in movies, like any western where horses oh, when they fall, fall and oh, like, God. you know, I just like I can't get over it. I can see other stuff and get over it. You know, it's like Emily talks about like her intrusive thoughts are different. Yours mm-hmm. are more like kids. Like mine are if I see animal abuse, like I just. I, I like can't. Yes. So yes. I do this family constellation theory thing and I'm like, this is kind of food. I'm like always, whatever. I'm always a comedian about it. I'm like, this is some, co- like, yeah. whatever. Why am I paying you by check? Like, this is not a thing. <laughs> like, I, you're clearing my energy. Cool. Okay. <gasps> oh my God. Um, and, uh, and so she like has you like stand on all these things and, you know, she finally was like, um, you know, you're uh, great great grandfather like do you know anything about him like and I was like no what like coal miner West Virginia you know and they're like well he did something unforgivable I'm like yeah guys that long ago were all <laughs> yeah no shit it's probably how it was made yeah by the way the raping <laughs> t- stealing from the Native Americans <laughs> like yeah what so, yeah, cool. did he do anything good that I, would be the standout <laughs> there anything smallpox <laughs> blankets like you name it I come from a long line of businessmen yeah um, and <laughs> with a hot take and innovative solutions. <laughs> so I, he, she says, she also says, what your great great grandfather did is unforgivable, and your grand great great grandmother, the way that she punished him was that she withheld her love, and it's a small thing, but that's exactly what I do. That's exactly what I do. I don't scream. I don't yell. I withhold my love. Yeah, I yep. ice you the fuck out, and it's like. It's really hard for me to stop. Wow. I mean, to your point about like not being conscious, like this is like normally I can go like take a contrary action. Just go apologize. Is this like in relationships when you get hurt or you something c- comes up? That's what you'll do in like romantic relationships, friendships. Like what's French, tell me. Fr- like friendships that scare me a little bit. I will kind of be in denial. Like I'll go if like if you were yes. to just right now freak out and be like fuck you and just do something super weird or mean or just snap on me or yeah. be like I don't like how this is going. You're not yeah, being yeah. funny enough like whatever. Um and left I would pretend it didn't happen. I mean as of that was like the coping mechanism as of recently. Right. Uh, I hope I'd be a little more conscious but I would kind of pretend it didn't happen. Right. But the when where when would you ice people? When That's would that when happen? That's when I'm in like a romantic relationship with somebody. Man, I oh like my God, I just ice but I can't get out of it. For so days. That is what I my uh, a, a partner I used to have used to have the same thing and I I'm I used to have a joke about it in my act and saying like there were times where I was like, can you just hit me instead of this? Because it would be quicker. At least you would be touching me. <laughs> and I like, because it would be so painful because I would do something that I didn't know what would happen. And this person would shut down and just like, act like, no, no, ev- no everything's fine. It's fine. Which and like, I used not to, touch me. I and used like, to do a joke. I think it was my first special about how when we um, ice guys out, it's not a punishment, it's a reward. <laughs> 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 I think I'm like, he's That's like, so silent funny. treatment, thank God. No, yeah, but, but for it's me, so, it's but, not, I, but, he, but he used to say, I cannot help it. I don't know what to do. And I'm not. It's, and I, so I, I say I like, totally it's sympathize. not fine. I'm able to kind of say like, this is my inner child shutting down and yeah. just wants to go hide and I'm going to need a couple days. Otherwise, if you put, if you push me, I'm going to say something I regret. Right. It's going to change the way you view yourself forever. You do not want me being anything but silent right now. Yes. Because I want to hurt you so bad. That's the kindest thing you could do. I'm hurt. And it's just like a, it's just let me, let me have the dignity of my own experience. Let me not fuck this up. I, I hear that. And then day two and three is all just embarrassment from day one of doing it. And then you have to maintain it. Now I'm embarrassed that that was my coping mechanism. Like what kind of child uh, is like, I'm not going to talk to you. Like, and then you're just, then you're just embarrassed that you did that. And then, cause then you have to be the asshole that goes back, comes back with your tail between your legs. Like, hey, I'm ready to talk to you again. Like you can come into my tree house now. Yeah. (laughs) Like you're just such a child you know so it's like day two and three it's I'm embarrassed and now I'm just like it's just my pride I guess and then it's like do you want a coffee like then it just has to be like fuck how do you get how do you handle that now do you still do it or do you is there a way that you can not do that I am able to go hey sorry like he's I'm with someone right now who is like so non-judgmental and is so ready to drop the charges at any moment. Oh, wow. And there's times that he will get upset at me about things that I truly do not understand and I'm grateful for it. Like, tell me, you tell me. Emily knew right away what went sideways on this situation. So I am 
39 years old. I froze my eggs. The guy that I'm with is 31. We're like, let's freeze embryos, right? Like we should freeze embryos. That would just be a thing to do to take the pressure off. Don't know if I'll ever use them, get a surrogate, whatever. And so um, let's just knock it out, right? Because I like, I mean, I, it's like before tour, I have like three months. I don't want to be doing like hormone shots on tour. Like me, you know. Some people like go on vacation. <laughs> Monsters. I know, right? By the way, what is more stressful than a vacation? No, I love, I, I do know you. about myself. I love planning a vacation. I don't like being on a vacation. <laughs> so you like working. I mean, that's we a job. We spend our is lives in vacations. hotels. Like, there's no, like, I, I can't. So, um, uh, so, okay, okay. So there's the fertility doctor mm -hmm. that is available via Zoom whenever he is not working. Okay, mm -hmm. he's a full-time vet. He was, like, studying for some specialized boards or something, which is whatever. It's very, it's a big deal. But he was done at 8 o'clock, and he, like, comes in, and I had scheduled the fertility doctor for 8.30, and I was going to do it with or without him. Okay? Right. The fertility doctor comes on. I'm basically just saying, like, how much time do I have? The eggs? Like, just whatever. And he's, like, there, and I was like, oh, hey, I'm do the fertility doctor can talk now. Do you want to just hop on? And he was like, yeah, sure. And then he comes on and we have this like great conversation about like, okay, you have plenty of time until you're this, da, da, da. And we're like, cool. Okay, so we'll freeze, um, uh, freeze sperm and whatever. Sorry, I've been talking all day and I'm getting locked up. But uh, it's like, we'll freeze sperm. Like we made a plan yeah. for like when it worked for him, when it worked for me. Computer closes. What the fuck was that? Wait, you or him? Him. <sighs> okay, so he felt like he was pulled into this and if he was he was put in a position that the doctor would have thought he was like a bad unsupportive boyfriend had he said he didn't want to be a part of the conversation is that his argument interesting that he you put him on the spot of like i'm not gonna say no to going on this conversation aren't these the same guys that are like when he pulled his dick out why didn't she just leave the room <laughs> <laughs> you could have been like you could have walked by he wasn't in you could have walked behind the computer and been like like, I didn't, like, we talked about having this conversation at some point. I just was like, I'm scheduling this if you want to join, if you don't. I just assume that everyone's going to tell the truth of if they would like right. to. I would just be like, like, ah, you know, can is he be one minute? Is he scared is he of me? Scared of, uh, like, is he scared that that might so. disappoint you or that he might look, maybe he's scared that if he didn't want to do it, that doctor might go like, hey, by the way, I just saw the way that your guy like reacted. Maybe you shouldn't be doing this with him and like get in your ear, but like, is Imagine he scared? Imagine a about doctor doing that. <laughs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> like what I, kind of insurance do you? Like, I mean, what? this is just the way what like, kind of I'm doctors? thinking, I don't know. What was his, what did he say though? What was he was just upset? like, that was, you should have told me that was happening. I was like, well, I believe the most respectful thing I could have done in that moment was schedule it. If you can do it, great. If not, fine. Right. It's, I would have done it without you. I don't like having kids or this call. I will do it with or without you. Right. If you want to join, great. Like, I just didn't think. Did I he just, feel like he was, like, signing on, like, I have to have kids now? You know what it is? is? freaking out? I am so far away from doing anything out of obligation anymore <sighs> that it blows my mind that someone's like, well. That someone was, you love just did something out of obligation. But it's just like, he's. I was doing that at 31. Like, I was just like, oh, yeah. I'll just That's what I was going to say. If someone 31. wants to talk to me, I'll talk to them. That's, like, the only time I'm like, there is a certain wisdom that maybe only comes with age or if you haven't, like, done work around codependence, which is the motherfucker. I'm like, what? why would you sit on a call if you didn't want to? Like, that it is, blows. Whitney, I totally agree with you. And I, he's like, well, it, it would have been rude. I had to be polite. And I'm like, I am, uh, to me, at this point in my life, I see it as so much more rude to sit and do something you don't want to do and then I build a the resentment. I, when I when I see my friends doing things they don't want to do or putting up with people in their lives, my parents, my like anyone, I just go. It, I think it makes me feel unsafe because I'm like, well, do you just do you hang out with me when what you don't want to? What else are you to? doing that you don't want to do? Yeah, because you really pulled that. I want to be with someone who respects themselves enough to go to know their boundaries and know that they're not wrong to say I don't want this right now. Like, no is a full sentence, uh -huh. and I I really get upset when my friends don't utilize it it's in interesting. the same way but then it's also about one it's yeah, also I, me trying to control which, what by the way, they want to do but it's like I know but that's the, that's the main thing because it's like you know like when you see people in bad relationships and you're like well good and you're like they don't think they're in a bad relationship yes or they, they wouldn't don't be know. in it you're just gonna come off cunty and judgy yes they're just like she's jealous like you cannot when has anyone ever been like hey you're in a toxic relationship you should get out of it and you're like and they go oh my god oh really? my god thank you I did not know Thank you so much. I'm going to cancel that appointment at the tattoo parlor I, <laughs> right now. <laughs> I am going to, like, it's never happened. And you have to let it run its course. Toxic relationships, um, people that are in addictions, like, there's just no, because I get a lot of people asking me because of I've been so open about eating disorder stuff, like, hey, my sister is anorexic and it's very clear and I, what should I do? And I just say, I don't, 
I, there nothing. is nothing you can say. Nothing. Honestly, there's nothing that you. There was literally, and I try to think back to what my mindset is, and what I always say to people now. I watched that Alanis Morissette documentary. Did you watch that? I mean, yeah, I mean, yes. It was so freaking good. Yeah. She was talking about being. I bulimic. think though she didn't like it or something. So I. I know I'm a little right, it's, but there was a part that I that I think really helped me and helped others is that she was saying that she was bulimic and didn't know what to do, and that. Her friend walked in on her doing it and all her friend did was just hug her yeah. and say, I love you. And it wasn't like, I'm worried about you. Mm-mm. What are you doing to yourself? I don't understand this. And bulimia by by a large margin is the most like shameful of the eating disorders. And insidious in terms of like, it's the disease that tells you you don't have a disease. And it's like, that was the last time. And that was the, didn't yes. have, you can just like block it out. And it's so, it's just so gross. You have to clean the toilet yeah. all the time. You smell. But you There's, can disassociate while it's happening. Totally. You know what I mean? So for uh, that really struck me. Cause I go, that's what I want is like, that's what I could have needed when I was struggling when I, and I struggle with stuff now. Like sometimes I'm b- become a really big bitch or I'm like, you know, not getting enough sleep. And so I'm just not treating people well, or I'm too controlly. And and I always tell my friends, like when I get in that, when I'm in that state of mind, you're not going to get through to me. You just have to Mm-mm. say like, hey, I love you. And when you're ready to talk about yeah. whatever you want to talk about, I'm yeah. here for you. And that's really all you can do for that's people. All, it's, all, it's also eating disorders are like the main thing is control. So it's like the more you try to control someone with it, the more they're going to recoil oh into their disease. It's just like the, I mean, it's just One like- One time I gave a girl a note at a- um, at a gym I was it was before I was performing at the DC improv and there was this girl on a uh, stair climber and I was there working out too yeah like, of course didn't need to be of course so who am I to yeah. do that but I was at a point where I felt recovered wasn't at all but yeah, like yeah. no one would have seen it on me but I saw her and I was just like like she just looked like she was about to break and I was her so many times and I remember just being like what would you want and so I wrote I went in the locker room and I like wrote this like shaky note of like hey I've been there like I no judgment like if you ever want to talk to someone about what you're going through with no judgment like reach out to me and I like wrote my name and stuff and she PS, never did what's your and, secret? I, and I just what P.S. what's your secret <laughs> P.S. P.S. Like, how many calories did you burn P.S. today uh, uh, did you orange juice on a just curious on yeah yeah diet sun kiss just curious just curious <laughs> I won't tell anyone. <laughs> how much? How much? Oh my god! Uh, and I, I remembered. I just walked over to her and was like, "Here," the, the, like just gave it to her. And there's, you know, I look back on that and I go, "I probably shouldn't have done that." But um, you just want to. There's just no way to get through sometimes. But I don't know I what think the that's solution something is. Something that's like planting a seed, whatever it is. I look back at anytime someone was like worried about me when I had really bad eating disorders. Yeah. Like what they didn't understand is I was like nailed it. Like I I'm know. on the, you know what I mean? Or if someone was like, you look, t- are you okay? I'd be like, okay, I'm a- the rice cakes are working. Like it, they didn't understand that it was it, the way that it goes through your brain. When people stop worrying about you, that's when you're like, that's when you're like, oh yeah. Oh, when no. someone's like, you look so healthy and you're like, okay, oh, shouldn't have had that pear or whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? So it's like, they don't understand that when you're saying something, it's going through this dysmorphia machine and turning into something completely different. Hey kiddo. Hey man. Uh, We're now taking a break from this dazzling guest um, that hopefully isn't such a specific guest. Such Such like like, uh, such a a you know who it is. (laughs) You know who it is. Can't put your finger on it. Are you eating while we're recording? (laughs) No. Okay. So Catalina Crunch is so delicious that Grace has (laughs) broke the main rule of podcasting, which is don't eat while you're doing it. I'm so sorry. It's so good. I I, like. I started eating it before we started rolling, and now I can't stop eating it. So we have um, a neuroscience professor here. Tell we keto is the way to go for your brain, right? It is very useful, yes. And then generally, I think it looks good. I mean, I've never tried, but it sounds great. It is fine fiber, no sugar, all good. It is so delicious. Yeah. It is. I've never looked better. They have eight crave-worthy flavors to choose from, like nostalgia-inducing um, cinnamon toast. Which is what you have right there. Ah, uh, Zero gram sugar, 11 gram protein, and nine gram fiber. Yeah, that's huge. That's wild. You can have cinnamon toast, decadent dark chocolate, creamy chocolate peanut butter, holy mackerel. Are you, if you're not sure what flavor to try first, that's what the variety packs are oh, for. That's a good story. It says... Catalina Snacks was founded by a diabetic who believes you can enjoy great tasting cereals and snacks earnestly made with protein, fiber, and good fats while minimizing sugars. Combining nutritional science with culinary arts, we have created delicious 
healthier products that help you achieve a better life. It's gluten-free, grain-free, non-GMO, only real clean ingredients, but nothing artificial. I'm sorry about the diabetes. That sounds awful. Um, but thank you. I'm really glad we got the cereal out of it. Uh, see why Catalina Crunch Cereal is the fastest growing cereal brand in America and soon to be all other places. Just go to CatalinaCrunch.com slash Whitney for 15% off your first order plus free shipping. That's CatalinaCrunch.com slash Whitney. Not sure which flavor to start with? Try a variety pack and check out their delicious cookies and snack mixes while you're at it. Again, that's CatalinaCrunch.com slash Whitney for 15% off your first order plus free shipping. Look, Frank's trying to get it out of my mouth. Um, we were just talking about sleep and how important sleep is. And again, we have a neuroscience professor here right now because we just want to make sure everything we're saying is true. So we now just have him here at all times to make sure he can corroborate everything we're saying. How important is sleep? Very important. Very important. But sometimes it's hard to get to sleep because sometimes I'm a silly goose and I'll just like have a latte at 6 p.m. <laughs> it's true. You want better sleep. And you know that That's I right. will look at my phone up until the buzzer. I mean, I'm li I will look at my phone in bed. I'm not doing this thing. We put, you have to put your phone outside your room. You can't look at your phone three hours before bed. I don't, wh whose life can, can, can have, have, make those choices? Can I tell you something? Yeah. Um, ever since I started using Beam, I have decided that like when I take my first sip, that's when my do not disturb goes on at night. <laughs> Hmm. So if you see the little, if you see that, crazy if you see that, um, see that crazy as notification turn off. I see six fifteen. Uh, okay, but, but that's part of your ritual. That's part of my. That's part of my routine now. I love it. It's like um, it tastes like hot chocolate, but like not sickeningly sweet. It's delicious. It just like calms me down and gets me ready for night night time. So sleep. I have struggled with sleep my entire life, and um, this is like a miracle. It yeah. has L-theanine, right? Mm -hmm. Melatonin. Go on. And magnesium? What yeah. is the other thing that, yeah, yeah those yes. are all the most soporific things. True, correct. That's a big word. Impressive, the two of you. Really. Yeah. So we are introducing for you guys Beam Dream. Beam is the world's most innovative functional wellness brand with unique products for, for everything from sleep to recovery. There are so many dogs in this vicinity. Oh, I'm sorry, Beam, guys. Beam contains. We're trying to get through this, but dogs do keep coming in. I don't. These aren't even we my dogs. We need to feed them Beam. I haven't even seen them. They'll I know. Right out. <laughs> exactly. The door was closed. It was fully closed. Um, Beam is so good. If Bill Cosby were still at it, he'd just use Beam. <laughs> <laughs> it has no THC, just TLC. This is yes. my uh, this is my part. No Isn't THC, that beautiful? just TLC. Uh. It contains natural sleep promoting premium ingredients, triple lap tested. No <laughs> THC. You wake up feeling gonna... refreshed. <laughs> Mona. <laughs> Mona, come here. She's so excited. Okay, 98% of people surveyed fall asleep faster when taking Beam Dream, and 99% of people experience better sleep quality. So what are you waiting for? If you don't love it, which would be psychotic, um, you, you get your money back, guarantee. Don't lose sleep over it. <laughs> for a little time, get $20 off when you go to beamorganics.com slash GFI and use code GFI at checkout. That's B E A M organics.com slash G F I and use F -Y, code G F Y. It's true. G F Y. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Not that good. G F Y and use code G F Y for $20 off. Sometimes when I'm in the body obsession and like I'm not getting enough sleep, I'm depressed. It goes into my body and it, and I think, and I am in recovery from eating, eating disorder, but things flare up. And someone wrote to me today and was like, hey, I just want to let you know like what you said about. Camila Cabello or what like and I didn't say anything mean but I, I I said something like I said something that made this girl go no wonder girls feel that and I was like oh my god thank you for holding a mirror up because I'm in the fucking disease right now and I'm talking like a crazy person in the way that I'm talking like I don't even realize it yeah I think it can just get it's just my go-to thing and obviously like I'm 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 always like reluctant to ever talk about this stuff because it's just like that's like her thing. All she talks about is her eating disorder. But I just feel like I don't know. It's, Camila Cabello? No, me. Oh, like yeah. I feel like I I it's just so much of like what like even last night I saw Mark Mayer and I'm like I'd love to do your podcast he has, again. He's like, what are we going to talk about eating disorders? And I go probably actually because I've got new ones since the last time I went on that I've ready to talk about. But like I just I never want to be the the eating disorder girl. But I do find that. 
doing enough podcasts, like I start to notice patterns and I'm like, oh, you're talking a lot about size and stuff. And I'm like, mm. examine that. And but what do you think that you are saying it to like get ahead of someone thinking it? Like, I'm going to talk about the fact that I you know, before you can even think about it, or make, you know, like, do you yes. feel like it's like a subconscious way of trying to control it? Like, I find myself doing it more oh, yeah. with like looking older. I'll be like, yeah, I know because I look like Steve Buscemi. Like, I'm like, why am I bringing this up? Like, yes. why am I... It hurts me so much when people make these comments and I'm doing it about myself. I guess just to be like, I know you're what you're, uh, let me, yeah. I, it's like a, it's like a tick. As we're recording this, I am trying, <laughs> I'm thinking what comics are going to say about you and I and how like the, the, we only talked about the same, like I'm, th I'm already formulating the YouTube comments in my head <laughs> and trying to get, trying to say exactly what they're typing as they're typing it so that they can go, well, now I can't write that. Like I'm always uh, trying to beat them yeah, to it. Yeah. And what it does is it actually just creates the, 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 the thing that isn't even there. Let me add for your, ne like, what is your dream for the next like five, 10 years? Oh, that's Cause so I good. look at it, it's like you have this reality show coming out and you have the, um, you were just on the fucking Boy Island 2 and like you're just like what are you because I realized this the other day I was like I am like I'm not getting what I want and I want and I'm like I haven't thought about I don't know why maybe it's just since the pandemic I used to have like vision boards and lists you and did now, yeah oh yeah I have never had that stuff I am like I now feel like I am just like ad hoc being like okay I guess I'll do movies like you know what? I guess I'll make this show maybe that's a healthier way to do it yeah but I also was like if someone were to ask me what I did want I don't even know if I could answer it I know I, I really I've never had like goals I'm so ever. like one day at a time program like don't think ahead don't future fuck like let you know like I let, try to do that too I think I just want to like be really comfortable with myself like that is my goal is just to be just to be okay with whatever people think about me and try and while at the same time try not to fall out of favor because I'm so worried about I really like the level of fame that I have quote unquote fame yeah, that I yeah, have yeah. because it's at a level where people are like she doesn't get the do like she deserves more like we'd like to huh? see more of her yeah because the second I get it they'll yep. go we're, we're good yeah 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 she's yeah. everywhere oh, who do you think oh, you are God. yep 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 so it's there's just a sweet spot there's a perfect sweet spot I'm in it right now and I'm so scared and here's what I'll say like I think that when we signed up to be famous it was a different kind of fame it was like what you said when you were 15 is water under the bridge. Like those Halloween costumes when you were sick. <laughs> like fame when we signed up to be famous was like you were more of an enigma. Like you didn't like, you know, if someone had told me that like I was like, I want to be a comedian. If they're like, OK, just, so you know, in 15 years, you're going to every week have to talk about your mental illness for four hours <laughs> and talk into a phone and be like, come to my show. Hey guys. Hey guys. I'd be like, Ugh. and people right now are saying, no, you don't, Wendy. You don't have to talk about it. You're choosing to, but it's like, no, we kind of have, this is, this is it. This is the talent. You're obsessed with me. Um, I'm not doing this. I'm not I blame doing this. the game of like, I'm not what doing this. Saying. I'm not doing this. I yeah. love that. Yeah. No. I'm like, okay. I didn't read that comment. You just yeah. left. So the only thing, the only thing, uh, <laughs> the fact that you even think I read your mean comment is the harshest thing I can do to you. That's <laughs> so funny. The fact that you just said that and I didn't even see it. I know, isn't that great? <laughs> Everyone I always tell people that. Me I saw promise it. you I won't see it. I haven't read a comment Awkward. since 2014, yeah. I think. It's like, really honestly, been that long for me. if you're leaving mean comments about me and I'm not reading them, like, I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't even see it. I feel Five great to 10 today. Years. <laughs> Five to 10 years, I just, I want to, um, I want to be getting really good sleep. I want to like the way I look and be like, okay, okay with it I want to keep growing and working on acceptance I want to like I want to just I don't know I, I would like to keep doing reality sh television because it's fucking you easy you love it I love it it's so easy you don't have to learn lines you just be yourself you just be vulnerable you just be honest like this show that I'm doing with E which is like I'm replacing the Kardashian show like they're kind of banking on this show being like the new thing and it's a lot of pressure but it's also like it was it came out of me being like I just don't want to I want to do stuff with my family and my friends yeah. who are funny and I just don't want to memorize lines and I don't want to have to write things and I just I'm just lazy I want to just show up start talking and be it is kind of weird <laughs> like as I'm like when people are like, why don't you do more acting it is there is, is someone like went to actually like I wanted that but there's something so weird about like I feel like I signed up to do more acting when I hated being in my own skin and I hated right. my like now that I like like myself and I'm like 
feel like I'm like funny and interesting. Now I'm like, now I'm gonna go play this hooker? Like why? <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like it's just like a little bit weird. It's weird. I'm like why am I gonna go play a dumb person in Atlanta for two months? Yes. You know what I mean? Well, like we why? have a talent of being able to be ourselves. We are not reality stars in the sense that we are just belligerent on camera. I mm-hmm. mean sometimes, but like we I think our talent is like being okay with being and, ourselves, yeah. being honest, like really honest. And I'm so grateful that there's like a, a way that I can do that and people are entertained by it. Like it's just, and F-Boy Island is so fun and easy. <laughs> I just watch a reality show happen. There's no, it, it happens before you. There's no way to plan for it. So it just, you you don't have to like, you, there's no work involved. You just show up and I go, so who are you eliminating tonight? It's and then like, I go, oh my God. Like, and I just respond to it. I just get to, the, the only hard part is like hair and makeup. And, but that is that's lovely because I get to hang out with my friends and get my face painted. But it's tell like, me why I felt it feels like you said you were like having a hard time there. I was having a hard time there because I because it was COVID and the, there was a lot there wasn't many interactions on set. When I did F Boy One, we were in K- Cayman Islands and it was 2021, but there was no COVID on the island. We quarantined for two oh. weeks and then it was like summer camp and we could see faces and this was uh. very much like quarantine, stick with your tri- like little right. tribe and like on set was the only time that I got felt like able to be free and I was kind of at a hotel away from everyone else because they were scared that I was gonna maybe <laughs> like fuck someone on set. I don't know. But they, were, they kept me like away from people. So I was just like in this basement at this luxury resort and it was like a dark room that didn't have enough lighting. I was just depressed. But the show itself is the sweetest gig. Yeah. Yeah. It's I, do you ever get like sometimes when I see people like like reality show contestants if I'm around them too much like the ones that are like signing up to kind of be humiliated like signing right. up for the shot and for it whereas like my biggest fear is being embarrassed and these people are like I there's no there oh, yeah. is no way I'm not gonna come out of this not being embarrassed in some way shape yes, or form yes yes and like the, the, what kind of person that is and like I I don't know after talking to I think it was Mark Burnett uh, someone told me that Mark Burnett was saying that. The number of people that are on reality shows as contestants that commit suicide is like wild because after they are like didn't really sign up to be famous, they kind of fell into it. Then all of a sudden they had like they got humiliated or who knows? They had 15 minutes. You know what you think you're going to go in and know that you can control it and be the version of yourself that you want to be. And you can only hold on to that for so long because it's too exhausting. It's like doing a plank. You can hold it for like t- yes. 10 minutes. How do you tops, go back to like... Tops, and that's painful. And then you just relax. Your posture gets bad. Your f- anger shows on your face. And you become the the sometimes quite often the worst version of yourself because you're in a habitat that is built to bring that out. And it will be brought out. It's a prison experiment. They'll get you. 100%. It's, you know, and I... It's Lord of the Flies. That's why I, I really like my job because I feel like I bring a lot of empathy to it. And I... I love the cast members and I respect them so much because I'm like, you guys say what everyone's going to judge you for being on a reality show. And this is fake. And like, anyway. oh, you're a reality star. you're braver than anyone judging you at home because none of those people watching you at home and being like, I would never do that. They would never ever uh, put themselves in a situation where we see the real them and we're seeing the real you and you guys, I give them a little speech like uh, anytime that I feel like their morale is slipping of like, you guys are really brave taking this on. This is not easy. And I respect the hell out of them. It's like NFL players getting concussions. You're doing this for other people's entertainment. And it's also like life is such a, a like a shit show at this point. It's just kind of like, I don't know. It's like the realest thing you can do now is be a contestant on a reality show. It, it really is. <laughs> it's like watching one. It just everything is so Truman Show at this point and like meta on meta on meta. And it's, it's real. Kind of like, yeah, if you haven't, because we're all on our own. I'm Anyone that's judging someone on a reality show who's like sitting around talking to their phone, you're on, we're, we all have our own reality show in our mm, phone. You know, this yes. is kind of like, um, you know, it's just fascinating to me. And I remember uh, a friend of mine pitched an idea to Mark Burnett. And this was the idea. I think I'm getting it right. It was 12 contestants in a room, no cell I'm phones, in. nothing. Was okay. that? I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 12 people in a room, uh, just white walls, beds, like for everybody, nothing else. And then the ceilings are 17 feet high. And, you know, it's it doesn't matter how wide it is. And then hanging from the ceiling is a million dollars just cash. And that's it. <laughs> and they just film it. 
I'm in. I mean, that is it's like 17 feet above that's the ground. Squid Game episode four, though. Yeah, and then uh, the reality producer was like, we, "People will die. Mm-hmm. Yes, within yes. two days, mm-hmm. someone will die. It's um, you just cannot put humans in that situation. It's being so. When I hosted F Boy, I was removed from it. Like I see it happen, and that's as the host, I'm protected. Like I am not susceptible to any. I like I get emotional and I get wrapped up in the storylines, and I feel all I know that the emotions are real but then when I did this show for E I was suddenly like the subject and I had to really trust like okay are they going to portray me in a way that I don't want like am I gonna and then I realized okay they assured me like we want people to like you you're likable that's why we know this show want, yeah, yeah. it's our goal but then there's also you know I've seen the Kardashians <laughs> very unlikable and they are you know but that's your you know what I'm saying I think we like, I mean, in terms of Kardashians, I'm always like, I'm like, well, everybody hates them. We obviously don't hate them that much. You're we obviously right. see we parts don't. of us. And, and the more sometimes despicable someone else's behavior is or whatever, it's all, you know, look at what your bias is. Oh, I don't like women being ambitious. Oh, I don't like women thinking they're, pr- I don't like women wanting stuff. Like, I think the Kardashians really hold up a mirror to like our internalized misogyny, mm. our weird body shit, our weird, like, who do they think they are? Like, yeah. you know, like just plastic, sur- like, it's just, they are like these um uh what is it like a like a catharsis for us where mm. we're just able to kind of like I don't know like beat up on them in a way and they're just like having the last laugh I think they know on some level like being hated is just it's just how you become good. a billionaire you're right yeah it's okay. like you know I, and it's also I think that a lot of people you know I think we go as people that are like about being humble and have shame and don't want to be too big and you know at the same time like I want to you know, uh, be a performer, but I don't want to like take too much attention. I'm sorry for, you know, whatever. Like they're just like, yeah, we don't really have any skills except we like ourselves. And we're like, what? <laughs> yes. We have a bunch of skills and we hate ourselves. Yes. <laughs> That's not fair. Oh my God. It's like the one thing they have, we can't figure out. Yeah. That is a really good point. I can write a script. I can do this. I can do a podcast. I can start a business. And they're like, yeah, we just kind of like ourselves. And And look what happens. How How did you get that? (laughs) Just like, and I am so like, I'm always like, okay, what can I learn from this person? Instead of Mm. like hating on this person or criticizing this person, that's what the losers do. They sit around and they just like hate on the person. I'm like, what can I learn from this person? Mm. You know what I mean? And I'm just always trying to like figure it out. And I'm getting more and more on the train of, this is something people might think I already have, but I really don't, of delusional confidence. Okay, yeah. Delusional confidence. I have delusional insecurity, so why not also have some delusional oh, wow. confidence? I love that. Why not? Like, by the way, I've done the other one. Because the delusional insecurity, I feel sometimes like people go, Nikki, no, that's not the way it is. And I go, Who? you don't get it. Who? Like, so I'll say something about myself that I believe that is delusional insecurity, let's say. And then someone will go, you don't see the way I see you. And I'm like, well, you are stupid then. Because your you don't, opinion like, doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I like that's what I feel. And, and so I'm allowed if to. If I'm allowed to not not listen to the haters, why should I listen to the lovers either? Yeah, it because is, it works better. Yeah, yeah, it's better that's a good business. Point. Yeah. So I think that listening, I think the most successful people, they are able to take criticism from smart people yeah. and then ignore just hate from dumb people. Mm. You know, like right? take the good and leave the bad. Because sometimes like I'll go in my comments and people say stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I interrupt too much. I should stop. There I is say, good stuff there. I say like I too much. Yes. You're an unfuckable cunt. Ah. My the, the thing I hate so much in my DMs is like I love you but but I always open those because I go it's starting with love this person yeah. uh, honestly is saying this from a place of like hey I'm not gonna give up on you but as a friend because I do feel like people on my, that listen to my podcast know me very intimately yeah, more yeah. so than some of my friends so I do always implore my listeners to like if I get something wrong let me know and I what will- is the what is the feat because I get a couple things well first of all I get I if I open my DMs it's all like you're computer computer screen's dirty. It has fingerprints on it. Yeah. Oh my God. That, that cause is, you type on it. it. That, that, that's great <laughs> feedback. I would love that. It's like, a lot of that. Feed. It's a lot of, you know, but let me, what is like, because I don't really go through the DMs and I, to me, I, the same way that I don't either, but, but when I, I do see stuff, but my biggest, see it is, my biggest yeah. issue with the podcast is there's no feedback. Like I want feedback. I signed up to be a comedian that if you laugh at the joke, I'll keep it. And if you don't laugh, I'm going to cut it. Like I want feedback. Ooh, like I'm I able to really not so take it of it. My thing is like comedy is a democracy. And like in terms of the podcast, I feel like I'm just like blathering into a black nor- hole. Normal, sorry, normal people that watch it 
and enjoy it, don't comment. That's I like, know. Think of the last time. Is that still the case? When is the last time you commented on never something? Never in my <laughs> yeah. life. Unless it's positive, I've never I've never given a, a criticism on a comment. I don't think. The way that we used to bully each other is we would like egg houses yeah. and like smash mailboxes. <laughs> like yeah. that was, you know, this is just what I'm sure that young people like you would, if you got mad at someone, you would just throw eggs at their home. <laughs> like we just send like a, a little DM saying you suck. You should like, kill yourself. Yeah. yeah. Like we think they're <laughs> crazy for <laughs> leaving all those comments. And we're like, well, we used to just smash someone's mailbox driving 70 miles an hour. <laughs> and they're like, uh, we're just like kind okay. of. I feel like the girls that were popular got toilet papered <laughs> yeah. or like TP and stuff. Like we the, would throw I toilet was paper dying for someone to TP my house. People in the pandemic are like, you used to throw <laughs> toilet paper yeah. just to like for no reason, you know. So it's like I do. I'm always trying to be open to going like, okay, maybe that's something I need to believe to like get through the day. Yeah, like maybe that's something I'm telling myself. Well, I think that on this reality show, I think what the side of myself that I'm going to see that I used to see in home videos of myself is that I'm a brat. Sometimes I can be really mean to the people I love the most and a little bit of. A, you know teenage brat and like I think it it's helpful because just like I'll be like wow you should sit up straighter like I'll see a side of myself that I'm like okay I didn't even realize I talked like that or I'm not listening to people whatever it is and we were I blonde think I'm so see you can kind of get away with it so yeah I can't get away with it being what it's but like you- it's like she's like mm, in a bad mood oh no I don't <laughs> get away with it people are like you're a con you're like a nasty bit like people really make me feel bad about being a bitch because i i i really think that i'm a nice person most of the time and yeah. that i want the best for people but there is a side of myself that can be really mean to my mom to my best friend andrew my co-host sometimes like i will take out my own insecurity like i'll be feeling bad about myself that day and i'll want him to be in the same mood and if he's yeah. in a little good good mood i'll try to take him out of it and these are things i'm disgusted by about myself but i i have to get honest about them in my podcast and my listeners bringing them to light of like I can't listen to you anymore because you're so mean to Andrew ha- made me go what are they talking about and then I listen back and I go I wasn't that and, you know but there were yeah. times where I go ouch that but was were bad you, let me ask and you were you trying to hurt them were you trying to hurt Never him intentionally. It's, not, it's, it's all subconsciously but yeah. I know what it is it's me being like I'm scared that if you feel too big for your britches you're gonna leave me right. and not be my so friend I'm anymore because like you're dependent to- on me as my co-host so i don't want you to f- get excited about the thing that doesn't involve me because then if you get that thing you're gonna be like i don't need to hang out with her anymore i was only doing this i'm insecure that he's not my friend and the thing i'm most right scared reasons. of is you abandoning me so i'm gonna treat you the way that ensures that you're gonna leave yes is the like deepest most tragic irony yes it's like it's it it was a rude awakening but it was what Thank God that I got to see it because I'm I was I'm so myself on my podcast that I see bad sides of myself and I've been called out for it. But this show, it's like I'm going to see it. And I think but this show, I will say, like, as dumb and cliche as it sounds like I cannot believe how just doing eight episodes of the show, like, really changed my relationship with my family, with the guy I was dating. Like, I it forces you to be in circumstances and have conversations that you wouldn't have. And. I mean, stuff and it's came up like, was, like just like things that I've never articulated to my parents about frustrations, about feel, fe- honestly feeling like, why do you like, like, do you, I know you say you love me, but like why? Like I remember my mom uh, saying like, we love having Nikki home. That was a big thing of like, Nikki's back home. That's, you know, mi- moving back home to St. Louis. She's like, we love having her home. And I just go, why? Just, I want you to elaborate. Like, why do you like me Record around? Scratch? Yeah. And she was like, we just do. And I go, but like, <laughs> It's because I'm like fun and like I make you feel good or like I'm funny. And she's just like, because you're my daughter and I like it. Yeah. What choice do I have? And I just wanted to hear like things about me she liked, but she couldn't articulate it. And then everyone's like, easy, Nikki, like don't make her say because because you're you came out of her and she loves you. You just made me think of something wild, which I've never thought of, which is like, you know, the idea of like having a kid that's like you. Of course, you love your daughter. Of course, you love your kid. Yeah. But if you hate parts of yourself and that is showing up in your child, you're just seeing things that you hate in yourself hmm. in a thing. And the anger of like, or like, your ex-husband. Yeah, exactly. Like showing exactly. Up. I mean, how could a child not feel detestable if you, if they look like your ex-husband who you hate all the time? By like, the way, I always worry about that. Which by the way, I always worry about that. Cause like, I mean, say half the people are divorced or just like, you know, I mean, I was pitted against. It was like, your mom lies about this. And the reason you can't have this is because your dad didn't pay the bill. So I was just like, but why didn't you pay the bill? And it's just like the idea of like, number one, even when I look at like, you were just talking about old podcasts of yourself or old things of myself where I'm yes. like interrupting too much or like, I just don't, I was just like, uh, the idea of seeing it in a child and just being like, no, like, uh, 
Like I would I shaming would sh- them for the thing that you hate most. Or about just yourself, you're, that you're holding s- up a mirror it's to a me. Mirror. It's a little mirror of a little you that is supposed to be better and is a I better thought version. I had resolved that and I just modeled it or you inherited it. And now I have to live with the guilt that it's like not just me hurting uh, myself. It's like I brought you into this mess. And I, th- I think you're hitting on something like I never have seen my mom really like like herself in a way that felt genuine or not like just like saying it I've never really seen it and that's not my mom's amazing she's beautiful she's so much funnier than me she's just like the coolest and I know that but I've never seen her know it so I never really trust when she likes me too because I'm like how could you you don't like your you know you're the coolest and you don't like you my friend recently lost her mom to like Trump world you know where she's just like I don't recognize my mom anymore I don't know what happened over the past four or five years like whatever years yeah she's gone the one and it's every time we talk we we get in fights about these things all the time and then she eventually said mom i can't i can't be in your life anymore and her mom goes okay then then i disagree with him and she and and she was like oh my god my mom renounced all of this bullshit and she's changed then it came out her mom was just saying that because she wanted to save a relationship with her child and my friend realized that's all I wanted. I just wanted to know that you love me enough that you would do that. You don't need to. And now it's completely resolved. Her mom can like Trump and she can. Yeah. And she's it's it. She always thought it was about Trump. And it was about she just wanted to know her mom loved her more than something that her mom seemed so passionate about. She was maybe jealous of that passion of like, mm-hmm. I don't feel like you have that for me. And then she realized her mom did because her mom renounced it. And she just how felt old like is this person in her 40s? Oh my God! This we, we just are the only we are the only species that does this, dude. Most species they're born and they just walk off. off. They just walk. They're off. gone. For, and that was it. Done deal. Eat the placenta. <laughs> I really worry and about. And we never speak. I mean, just see this. I mean, it took me a long time to realize. Like you know, it, it, and my therapist said this to me once. Of like. Like parenting is a one way relationship, Mm -hmm. you know, like we do not, we, it's a waterfall. We do not take care of the needs of our parent ever. And like, and that is it. But also I do think it's, I do think it's on (laughs) us to kind of just be like, when is it going to be enough? Like, when is this insatiable need? I'm like, my dad didn't love me and he was never there. And I'm like, he fucking came to the basketball games. He did this. He, I got a card. Like, what did I want? You know when it's enough? I when wanted they... to what? Fuck him? Like, what did I want? I know. I know. And it, this is what we're trying to heal. But I, Whitney, I want to know. And and for you as well, I'm, like, do you ever feel, I had the realization of the day, if I ever, I don't mean to tread into weird territory, but if I, when my parents are gone, and that's like why I wanted to do the show. I wanted to have them on camera when they're, like, so funny and still, like, not demented and like mm-hmm. with it and I wanted like a little like time capsule of it because it's going I can I know what's going soon and they're so funny still maybe because they're slipping into it but um, <laughs> see for yourself May 1st on E but um, <laughs> welcome on Nikki Glazer question mark but it's, um, um, it's, a, it's a you think it's a reality show it's actually a documentary on Parkinson's <laughs> so <laughs> what I feel like I had the realization the other day is like the reason I want to be like to have achievements is so I can go, mom, dad, look what I'm doing and like tell them about it and have them get excited and have them watch and text me like you were so good. And when they go, when they're gone, I don't, I don't know that there's anyone else I want to show things off to. Like I do it for them. And I'm, I even had a thing with my, the guy I'm dating. I was like, I need you to watch me when I'm on like, like daily pop on E and just like still be like, you looked, you did good. Like I need you to like watch things I'm on because he's mm-hmm. just like, I like you. I don't need to watch these things. But then things. You, go, but then when he I does need it, are you, you like to hang my little like A yeah. plus paper on the refrigerator? But then are you able to say like, oh, you're only doing that because I told you to do it? I it's like that. I want you to want to wash the dishes. Well, I know that mm-hmm. when he does watch things and he gives me feedback, it always feels really sincere. It's just a matter mm-hmm. of him watching it. Like I just need him to watch it because once he watches something, he's like, damn, that was good. And I it fe- it's just a matter of like I need to get him to watch it. You know what I'm saying? So, but it it makes me. I, I, there was a moment of like I don't even know that I'll want to do this anymore if my parents are gone because that I really after do my it dad for. Died, I I was like oh my whole engine was trying to get his attention and impress him and now what, he's gone. What happened after I that? I was like oh I was like floating through space for a while, um, and I still kind of am. I mean I don't, yeah. I, I never like did I, things shift for you in terms of like. I had like five projects set up, like TV shows. I was just like, can't do them. Like pulled out of everything. I was like, What's literally, I just went to a wolf sanctuary for a couple of days and was like sleeping with wolves. I like, I like, I was just like, finally a year late because I like couldn't cry and then I would cry mm. and, and, like unconsolably. Like, um, yeah, yeah. I I was sleeping outside. Like it was just like I couldn't like 
deal with the pain. It was just like too much. And it it was like not sudden at all. And then it was like really sudden. And I think that nobody prepared. It's like the only thing we all know is going to happen to yeah. us, but you're never prepared because no, like there's no wisdom you can get. I remember the day that it happened. Um, uh, everyone that had lost a dad called me. It happens right away. There's like a network. That's what I hear. There's like, it happens right away. It's I like hear this. Kevin Christie and Dune Rayfield and Lizzie Kaplan and, and you just get the call from all of them and they know exactly what to say. It's like a secret society. It, it, it is just like, you don't want to hear from anyone that has not lost their dad yeah. or the mom situated the mom because they know exactly what to say. I cannot help you. Here's what I can say. Do not talk to anyone one that has live parents for a while you will hate them and you realize after you've lost a parent how much other people complain about their parents every conversation oh is god. like oh my god my dad's calling Ugh. Oh, you're like wow. is your dad call like you, little things get someone to take out of your calendar father's day because that's gonna fucking sneak up on you wow shit where it's like change all your passwords if it's your dad honestly name. i look at losing a parent like lsd like your life you will you can't go back when you you'll see things like because people describe that as like losing a parent there's before losing a parent and after it's the biggest You're, change it's of your when life. you become an adult like to me it's when you come, become an adult when you are Fuck. paying someone money to put your parent in a box. Oh my God. And they're God. up charging you and you're like, that's not what it's worth. I mean, like that's when you become an adult when you're talking Holy about shit. like, okay, the body has three days before it needs to be preserved. Like it, it you know, oh my God. I, whenever I have this kind of like. What do you say to someone if you are someone with a live parent and they lose their parent? Is there any, do you, what do you do? It depends. So number one, you don't Tell say what can I do for you? If you live in their city, you just show up at their house with food. Jewish people figured it out, dude. Jewish people, I literally, after a couple of my friends lost or went through deaths and I saw Jewish people run a funeral and run death, I was like, I want to convert to Judaism because they have death on fucking lock, dude. People come every day with food. I, there's there's <sighs> a plan. All you're doing is wishing there was a plan in place because it's when you realize like, oh, and look, we are designed for this. Sheryl Sandberg and some guy wrote, I'm not a big Lean In fan, but her husband died like really suddenly on a treadmill like at the Four Seasons. Oh, that's right. And she wrote a book on grief and mm -hmm. like we are designed for this. You know, something, I can't explain it, but like something I happens. Called fall off. When you, what's that? I'm so, that was a late lean in joke. Oh wait, which, which by the way, oh my god, I can't believe. I was like thinking, trying to think of a joke. I was like, I've, I haven't said a joke in a while, and I decided to make one about her <laughs> husband falling off a treadmill, and I said it's called her book is called <laughs> Fall Off. And no, we should take that out and go into the gym before your husband fucking dies <laughs> on a treadmill. So what did she? Jesus. What? But here's what I say: We are wired. That is what I do, obviously, with the grief. But we're designed for this. I can't explain it. When your a parent crosses, something does happen where you're like, I'm the adult now. Like I'm the leader of the tribe now. I'm the alpha now, and like I have to handle this, you know. And it's like you you are able to do things that you never thought possible. And with animal deaths, I'm really good at. It. So whenever a friend of mine has an animal die, like I'm there. Emily came with me recently. A friend of ours um, uh, lost a dog. He was out of town. Like I'm the person that comes in and is like, y you just remember them how, how they were. Let me take the body. I'll handle it oh from my here because at the end of the day, your this child, is a reality show. your fur baby, whatever is, it's just a bag in a parking lot mm. and you're, they're trying to run your credit card and it's not going through. Oh my God. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're saying like, give me the PO box to ship the ashes. Like it's so, there's no <sighs> dignity in death. It goes from my soulmate to like the bones didn't really fit in the back. Like it turns into like, just we're a, Ba a trash bag full of blood. Oh my god! It gets so gross so fast when you're looking at a bill of like. There you are know. people that I still like friends that have lost parents, and because I don't relate to them, and I know that I don't relate, and mm. I, there's nothing I can say. I say nothing, and there's. I mean, I can think of people that I'm like avoiding now because I dropped the ball so hard and not reaching out because I was just. It was too overwhelming for me, and like, and what, what do you say, do with fine. that? What do you do? They're I'm fine. Not and 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 the Cheryl Sandberg book, they talk. They, she talks about it of like as soon as her husband died, she went into work and nobody would talk to her. She was yes, like, no one knew what so to do. Fucked. The irony is that like when, but nobody should either. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's no one can say the right thing. But what there, should we there's do? There's nothing to say. It's always just show up. So if there's a hot, if someone's sick in the hospital, you do not say, when can I come? You just show up. You wait in the waiting room for three hours. If they come, great. You say, I'm in the waiting room. Come if you want to talk. If you don't, don't. I came with food. Just show, just solve a problem. Don't ask them how to solve their problem. Cause they, they're like, you're like, what can I do? Bring my dad back to life. Like yeah, there's nothing you can do. The, I, what I, can I do? 
unkill my mom. So just be there. You're just there. Literally you just show silent, up and be you there. show up without needing anything, without making it about you. It was really hard for me to understand that before I lost a parent. Because I was the person that was like, let me be the best friend and let me like show up here and let me like ask you all the things I can do for you. Like you just lost a, a, a Do you person. just furrow your brow and go like this? Like what do you, look like honestly, when you say show up, I'm not trying to play you dumb just here. Say, you, you no, ju- I know you mean, you, you just do, sit do, there and you just go like, I can't help you. What do you want me to do? Do you want to watch a movie? Here for you. Do you want a journal? Do you want to FaceTime someone? Do you want to talk about it? Do you want to not? A big thing is, do you want to not talk about it? Do you want to talk about something else? Do you want to like gossip about how mean this this is? Actually, really helpful because I, I really, I'll go this. I'll go here are my options. Do you want to sit in silence? Do you want uh, to talk about something else? Do you want to gossip about how like you know that bitch we went to high school with like cheated on her husband? Like, do you want to talk about the great? That's good. Do you want to drink? Do like what do you want? And then I'll stay out of your way. So it's like I just you know we've lost a lot of people in the last you know couple yeah. of years and it's like reaching out to the wife or the widow it's like I'm outside whether you need someone to watch your animals I a lot of times will just show up and be like let me know if you need me to take your animals oh, okay like you know and then I'll have like a canary for two months and I'm like oh <laughs> Jesus Christ and then um, you know just because that's the other thing is that when someone dies the animals are the first thing that is all of a sudden overwhelming and the dog gets out and the dog's lost and in addition to you know what I mean just like little wow, things like this that this is really helpful yeah, I don't think just, people like, think about this stuff bring food over just bring food stock everything with food bring water like do the laundry like sometimes just show up like uh, a friend of mine lost a, a parent and I just went to his house and just like cleaned his house oh my god it's like a little thing that like I he could that. not have done himself like yeah. I am being of service in a way that is like not making it about me or you know no that's really like that actually helps me because I you know it's gonna start happening more and more in uh-huh. my life that my friends are gonna lose parents but my, my I'm gonna lose friends and like what do you do and I, I tend to just avoid because I know there's nothing I can do so I'll just stay away and that just doesn't feel like the answer so laundry I'll do laundry literally laundry like cleaning stuff like stuff that is like just put yourself in a situation of someone that just lost a parent and like and now I have to clean the shit off my toilet like just sort of like the yes. little things that make a big difference like when you're grieving like the tiny like you need to be able to collapse and cry on everything mm-hmm. at any moment <laughs> be it a toilet be it a shower be it, you know, so it's like I just try to like go through people's houses and I'm like okay you can cry on this or you can cry on this and you just I just you're such wa- a helper you're so good at like that but it's like water by the bed it's just what do you these, need that's it's not, the I don't need Cummings. flowers don't yeah. give me something else that's gonna die oh my don't god don't give me flowers don't give me like I remember when my mom was in the hospital with a stroke the number of balloons I was like you guys she, I can't see my and mom. And then you just see it sagging fu- slowly. Did you? I know, totally. I was just oh like, God. like, ugh. Like, so I think it's just like the little things that make a big difference when you're just like crying a lot and you're just like, there's a water there because someone just thought to put it there. But I also think to make sure like you're not trying to take any credit for it. It's just like, I'm going to provide this for you. And like, we never have to speak of it again. I love like, that. Like, don't do anything if you don't think you're going to be able to like know how to do it. Because by the way, everyone's got their in case of emergency people. And like, I have to live with the fact that I'm not everyone's. Yes. And if someone's going through something, like if you posted about something like, horrible that happened in your life, I'd be like, hey, I'm on my way. And it's like, I'm probably not your top five. And that's okay. But I am. So, now you I, would be. I'd be like, hey, I've got a load uh, in the. <laughs> that's where I shine. The washer that I need that to is, switch I over. I shine in crisis. I, like if you need me to no, play your baby I shower. I know you would. You actually would be I, in my top five. And it's like, th- that's. And that's, yeah, that's. I, I learn a lot from you in that way of like the way that you've treated me and, and been there at the. Dr- like anytime anything's going on. Hey, I'm sensing something. Do you need to talk? Like I run away from that because I just feel like. Uh, but you it's run into awkward. it. I you I, you I run don't into always. It. I like if it. it's someone that is like a drama machine or someone that is like sick or like I won't. Like I'm very like okay. Before you solve a problem, make sure it's your problem. If it's like literally like a life or death situation where I'm like okay, I am uniquely qualified to be someone that is like fearless and great with like really uncomfortable situations. Like I'll go in That's... or like dangerous animals or like I'll just do it. No, but I, like I think if you need right. someone to like be cool at your baby shower I'm not your guy <laughs> okay. I'm the person in the court of like, like is your baby it funeral is I'm it, your lady I am your guy dude bring me in yeah like the yeah the, the I'm the one at the baby shower it's like isn't circumcision kind of abuse like oh I god. ruin it for everyone oh my god I've, uh, speaking of the, I know we need to go but like I really did the, you were talking about the horse carriage thing you'll be the one when I was in Cabo I was in a bad state of mind and I there was this like dolphin enclosure where they like the, it's SeaWorld-esque type thing and there was this guy I was getting 
getting money out of ATM and he was walking up to this kiosk where they were selling all these adventures. And there's whale watching that's humane enough, but it seems like Never. they're kind of harassing the, yeah, the yeah, whales yeah. when we went out. A you, and times. then you see the whales and you see all of like the boat marks on their back. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, they're like, wow, they're really go- going today. And they go, they're trying to get away from us. We're Aww. treating them like Britney Spears in 2008. Like we're paparazzi, <laughs> like on their tail. And like, it, it, so this guy was like, uh, my kids, uh, we want to swim with dolphins. And I just am like, Ugh, like I got, I got to do it. I got to stand up for the dolphin. I have to. And I, I was just sitting there. I just go, and the girls showing him a brochure and I go, they're abused and they like, they shouldn't be in that. Like you're supporting like dolphins deserve to you. There's other things you can do that isn't going to harm them. And he's just like, what? And I go, there's other things you can do that your kids are going to love and they'll get to like be in nature and they won't be like abusing animals. Like, I know you don't know, but those animals are like, they're miserable and they're depressed and they're slaves. And he was just like, I want to see the dolphins <laughs> and like just stick. To, and he just hated me so much. And so he went and swam with those dolphins even harder. Like I just, yeah. but I couldn't not say it. Yeah, and I, a- I had a feeling though, that maybe he went back to his kids and was like, that crazy lady said dolphins are abused. And maybe Sarah was like, wait, what? Okay. Now I'm feeling like my brain is clearing up after the, right before the podcast, I heard something crazy. And so I was like a little slow and distracted to close two hatches. Number one, the thing with the, um, uh, the horse carriages. I didn't finish that. What happened was the family constellation. She basically said yeah. like two grandfathers ago. I was like, ah, oh, what did he do that was so unforgivable? He yeah. probably just had like cirrhosis and it beat her or cheated on or whatever. And then I asked my uncle, I was like, what's up with the great, great grandfather? Like, what did he like? Oh, he alcoholic cirrhosis. I'm like, yeah, of course. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Like whatever. And then um, he was like, yeah, he um, actually invented this um, contraption that kept horse carriages from falling apart. So, like, they would always kind of, like, spread apart, and he figured out how to make it so that they Wait, didn't. this is true? Yeah, this or is true. This is, this th- is true. This is what you found out yeah. about your great-grandfather? And he was too bad. Great, 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 great. Okay, great, So, great. he was a terrible businessman. It's no secret on this podcast that um, my grandfather passed on investing in McDonald's because he said no one would ever spend a dollar on a hamburger. And, uh... <laughs> so- <laughs> So, uh, but I have an aunt that has a giant Beanie Baby collection. So I feel like we, it's all came right. clean in the wash. Well, you've turned things around <laughs> yeah, in yeah, this family. Yeah, completely. Um, and so, uh, uh, so yeah, so it was like, I think there is like an inherited guilt of like having been a part of something like that. You know, it's like, it's just, I, it is even wow. hardcore animal lovers. Was that crazy for you to find out? I mean, it was kind of a relief that, that it was like, your I'm not. family was part of the business was horse carriages, the thing that you like. It makes me feel less crazy and it makes me feel like there's some kind of cosmic plan that like, okay, I'm being driven. Like you were talking earlier about like how we're just like not making conscious choices. I do think I'm driven by like a guilt and a sort of like, okay, as we move through this life feeling like purposeless and like figuring out our terror management, you know, strategy, I'm like, if I can just like spend time trying to undo that mess that my ancestors made, like that is an honorable existence. You know, I that's love an, that. That's an honorable way to spend our time. You yes. know, all of our ancestors did disgusting shit. If we can just kind of like untangle that knot a tiny bit, it's like the least we can do. But also, I don't have it's epigenetic imprinting. There's some some stuff that we can forgive ourselves for, whether we're crazy or irrational or intense or whatever. That is just like forces that are driving us. That is just about our species proliferating and being. You know, it's like it drives me. I know anxiety is real. I understand, but. A lot of anxiety, I think, is good. People are like, I'm anxious all the time. I'm like, yeah, you. these you are superpowers. Yes. You know, like, th- this is like intuition. This is your body telling you to get out of the situation. Like, I feel like we diffuse a lot of our superpowers. So I'm a little bit of in a, in a place where I'm like, oh, if you had told, if you had said to me 10 years ago, if we were like having a drink at a bar and we're like, what is up with you and the horses? I'm like, I don't know. I feel like one of my ancestors probably like did something awful <laughs> to horses. And I like am living my life trying to like, clean up that mess. We would sound like crazy people. Yeah, I'd go to my friend who lost her dad the next day and i go, you don't believe what Winnie said last night. You want to talk about it? Get your mind off your dad. But she <laughs> said that her, you know, I would have brought it up as like, a lot know, of the been a story. Sh- <laughs> a lot of the shit that we say that sounds insane is yeah. like true. That's how, wa- I mean, it's just weird to think. No, like, I, I just wonder what in my past made it's like me too scared obvious. of fat drunk men on diving boards. That's one of my irrational <laughs> fears. I don't like when men get like too ballsy on diving boards and they're drunk and they like bounce once and then they go back up that bounce and then they bounce again i'm scared they're gonna like i i, I used to like <laughs> panic as old. a child and like be in the cl- after swim meets like all the drunk dads would try to show off <laughs> so like and i'd just be like no oh! and i didn't want to hear the sounds i was so scared they're gonna hit their like thwack their head on the board that's the only social gathering i'm not afraid of <laughs> that really I would oh be my god even talking row. about it makes me like really nervous i love people with delusional confidence 
Oh I my love god! The I'm idea so that they're like this hurt. tiny little diving board. I'm 400 pounds, and like I'm gonna do a front flip and oh like get like Gina from the Country Club to be my yeah. side oh, chick. Like I love no, they're gonna just a crazy head. person like that. But I'm just last. Okay, I know I have to let you go, but yeah. it's just like because I feel like my brain just started functioning get after on being on like a like a trauma response of like. <laughs> Um, I got some news earlier that I have a family member in the hospital and my brain just like had powered down. Yeah. But wait, the thing about What's the dolphin, excuse? the dolphin in captivity. Yeah. It's also, this is the thing about going back to hecklers. Like, was that, you remember when you said like, have you ever been a heckler? Like you in oh, that yeah. situation, if someone in my show needs to say what they need to say as much as you needed to say that dolphin was abused or I need to say like, oh. I am not getting in between you and this thing. Yes. Like, okay. We're hecklers I like in our that. Own, we're hecklers in our own I way. I, I really do relate to to people that speak up and are like, I don't like that. Like, I'm just like, what? What? You're right. That's like, okay. Well, let me hear you because this was that's a ballsy move you just made. And usually it's alcohol induced because yeah. they have liquid courage, which is not actual courage. You're just dumber. I think people are like. I got to tell her, like, people genuinely think, like, it's just wild to me because I'm like, you believe in what you're saying as strongly as I believe in what I'm saying about the dolphin or whatever. Yes. And, like, how ca- I'm never going to get in between you and that strident volition. Yeah, because we relate to it. We have we have those passionate things, too, that, that we don't understand how people don't get and it. That, and, like, looping back to, like, Will Smith, you had 12 strides to yeah, change yeah. your mind. Yeah. It's like someone that heckles, like, they're like, no, 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 I'll wait. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> ne- next one. Like they had plenty yes. of time to think this through. Oh my God. I yes. know being drunk or whatever, but like this is, I don't know. It's like, I just think it is as I move through life and I am, you know, when you look at someone else's phone or computer and you're like, how do you live this way? Yes. You look at the apps on someone's home screen and you're like, whoa. Oh, and they look no, at I your, don't know that feeling, but I know people having that response to my phone. Or they look yes, at yours yes. and like, how do you live this way? And like it yeah. is just, I am constantly stunned that people don't live the same way I do. And so I know. Something someone told me in program in the very beginning. They're like, the only thing worse than being unconscious and not having a program is having one and then living in a world where most people don't have one. Right. And you feel like everybody's just like a zombie being yeah. like pulled by marionette dolls of like invisible forces of their ego and alcoholism and da da da. And you're just like, why doesn't everyone see everything yes. the way I do? It almost sucks to like have the veil lifted and see it because you want to save everyone and you want to like get people to understand like, okay, well you do that because of this and, and you don't have to do that anymore. And and it just, and you, all, you cut yourself off from a lot of people and then you have to learn further in program or whatever program you're in. Like, that's part of it too is letting go of trying to control it's people like it's like so, with, it never ends when you see someone with a crazy eating disorder I'm like enjoy it while you can mm-hmm. I say that to people who drink I always go enjoy when it. they're like I drink I go I hope, you're enjoying I hope this. you love it because love there's gonna be a day where you when can't you, do it no more when you will have had drink or will you when you had an eating disorder you will have had it so just enjoy it now where you don't know you have thing. it. Like, I just, I don't want to take this away from you, this and delusion. you know what? That is the way to overcome addiction, I think, is acceptance that you need it. This is a thing. Like, I had so much shame about smoking pot. I quit in aug- last the August. Last time you were on, you were talking about that. Yeah. And what help, What helped me was to just, I finally stopped being like, you God, you're smoking pot again. It's the morning. Like you said, you weren't going to do it. And just feeling shame and like, oh, like, oh, God, you, you look the same as the guy on Hollywood Boulevard. Like, you're using the same pipe as someone uses for meth like this is disgusting you want to be loved like i used to have all those thoughts this day i just go how about you just are like you know what girl you're doing your best and this is a better thing than binging this is a better thing like thank god you have this pot you need this because you're struggling today and you're in pain good thing you have this enjoy it because it's not gonna be around forever the second i just like was like yeah it fell away within a week. It's by the way, once it was gone. And, th- and this is my whole thing about like, I think a lot of why we have to do things is because they're taboo. And do we make them untaboo in order to like diffuse their power? It's you know, it's like when I'm like, you have to stop doing this bad thing. If I'm like, this isn't that bad, then all of a sudden that magnetic attraction of like hurting myself goes away because it stops being a weapon. When you unweaponize yes. something, that's when you stop like the needing anxiety, to hurt yourself with it. The anxiety you have from feeling shame about doing the thing that is going to cause you to do that more because the only way to soothe anxiety about shame is to do something, is to do the, the so it's going to cause you to use more. Just if you are drinking right now and you're embarrassed of it and you know you need to quit someday or you you smoke pot too much or you have an eating disorder, if you anything that you're just embarrassed of, try this week just for me to 
to just go, thank God I have this because the alternative is kicking my dog. Yeah, you yeah, don't yeah, know yeah. what's, yeah. What, if you didn't have that, you need that right now. Yeah, yeah. Thank God you have it and fucking enjoy it because you are going to get to a point where it's going to go away. So enjoy it now. Just appreciate that you can get loaded. <laughs> appreciate that you can, you know, scream or do whatever you're doing. Just let yourself off the hook for it. Don't be shamed about it because that's, it's not going to make it go away. And it's going to be over when it's over. It's like they say like, you know, you're done fucking the gorilla when the girl is done fucking you. <laughs> they say that? Yeah. In, okay. <laughs> wait, this is not a... This isn't a... <laughs> what I meetings mean, are you going to? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's this, it's a one-on-one meeting with this guy in his hotel room where he's like, no, you're oh, done when... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm done. Uh, is that not it? Yeah. Um, No, this is something that I heard a lot in rehab of like, it's yes. a meeting called The Beast, which is like... Is reality you- meeting... Was that bestiality? <laughs> okay, it's called the beast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, this is my animal rescue organization. <laughs> I rescue them by fucking them. Yeah. Um, and uh, no, it's a... Uh, it's the beast and about sort of like being humble to being able to go like uh, our ego says like, I can handle this today or I'm going to stop eating those 10 sleeves of Oreos. Right. If you're just like, I have absolutely no control over what I'm going to do in 20 minutes and I now know that about myself and the more I go, don't eat that, the more likely it is that I'm going to act out it. and cut and hurt myself. So just the idea of like, this is, I have a beast on my back and the more I fight this, the harder it's going to be for me. So I yes. can do the next indicated action and just like sit on the couch and like make an outreach call or like write a gratitude list and just hope that I don't piss this, just don't piss this thing off. Or when you do go into it, just forgive yourself for it and know that you're not a bad person because you're doing it like you don't want to be no one wants to uh, be an addict like you didn't choose this and you might feel like you're choosing it, but it's all you have and it's, it's also a superpower of like I think also when you turn your like character defects into superpowers it really helps going like okay I'm eating 19 fig newtons in, fig newtons in a row 2000 years ago I would be the most important person in the tribe <laughs> like this i uh, my brain is wired like this for a reason you know like these are superpowers i don't need them anymore and then the inner child work is what really helped me but um in scarcity complex stuff but just the idea of like you're not you're you're this is like we're wired to do this we're wired to go like okay sugar can't eat yeah. as much as possible and whatever and like then i'm able to kind of like forgive myself and dismantle it all and just go like you can stop at any time that really helped me i did go metformin i went on which has really helped me with my like sugar stuff because i used to like have like major sugar what stuff. is it sorry metformin What's so that? i do think especially since your parents uh you're worried about them everything david sinclair says to do the nad the nmn metformin it's like all just like new anti-aging stuff okay. and just like how to like you can take like eight years off your biological age now it's the book is called lifespan and it's like okay. i think it has helped so much uh, i'll read any book you tell me yeah to that's so funny yes yeah. so yeah so i started going on metformin and that's just helped me because i used to have like a sugar thing mm. i oh, used yeah. to i didn't like sugar at all during the day but like at two in the morning i would just go hard on like Ooh, fake yeah. protein bars oh it just like girl like thousands of oh. grams of sugar okay what else are we going to close the thousands hatch on? Because I just um, want to make sure. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of hatches open. I mean, we did. I, mean, I feel I, pretty good. I haven't been bored in this conversation. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I don't know. I, I I think, uh, you know, we've probably lost a couple people in certain places. And that's, you know, that, but They'll be I, I would like those people to try to have a, a, a ca- captivating conversation for two and a half hours. But here's with, what. No, but, no here, but I also think it's like to me, the podcast I listen to, it's like I'm not like. I don't want it to be like, interesting fact, joke, joke. Like, I'm hanging out with them and I'm learning that. But it's just, I think that what I, I'm i like learning today and I'm so glad it's you is like when like life happens and you're not feeling like funny or like interesting or whatever, um, you still have to go to work. Mm-hmm. I know. And, and this, this is, is one of those days. I have these days all the time. I'm sorry that you feel it with me, but like I'm I- so glad it's with you because I think if it was any, with anyone else, I would just be, because like when I get sad, like I had a personal thing happen this yeah. morning and when I get sad, I just get like really serious and si- I, I would hope, but yeah. like I was trying so hard to not be sad today and it's so tiring. Yeah. Yes. To like when you just need to cry and you just, can't and then I guess I just had such a like like the inability to just sort of like feel your feelings I haven't had that in a really long time or it's like I had to be on this tv show today where I had to like be on and funny and silly and I just was like 
mad at the people making the show that yes. I'm like, why are you making, you were dying. Like it just, I was in such an existential crisis and yes. I just was like, I was trying to like show off like cool things about my house and, and it's just be like, funny and all, all on and the it just is like, we're dying. And, but I, like, it just, nothing matters. But you couldn't actually say what you wanted to talk about most yes. of all. Yes. Yeah. And I feel so like emotionally like constipated. <laughs> Like Dude, con yes. confused. So I'm like, so I feel like I was very boring in the beginning because oh I God, was just like, I was just like coming out of the haze. I and felt I was the same way about myself, and I have so much guilt about it. A lot of times when I do podcasts, where I'm just like, did you say anything funny? That's why I made that stupid lean in. Like I was just, like, I loved it. But here I, I'm just I, like I, burping up this punchline, just trying to be <laughs> interesting. And that's that's what I have the most guilt about. Is like sometimes I'm like, am I even funny? Like you're too serious. Like I was on doing the press today, and people just kept going like. Well, this is a this is a heavy show, and I'm like, I get that note so much from lighthearted shows. They go like, we went there today, and I go, well, actually, that's a good thing. You know what? Fuck it. But you know what else it is? It's this thing of like, and I'm a woman. I need to be. I have to be twice as funny to get half. And it's just sort of like, at this point, if you fuck with me, you fuck with me. And that's that's all. They're like, I can't control this, and I just try to go like, I'm giving someone permission today to not have to be on all the time and not yes. have to be like, you know, whatever. And like, I can also cut the boring shit out later if I want to. You like, can. it's just sort of like, at what point, you dumb whore, are you just gonna stop? No, but here's doing the thing. This. this is important. If people do make it to the end of this podcast, which who knows at this oh, point? Oh no, they will. Oh, but they if will. they do, if they make it to the end, I think this is actually so awesome because so many people have to show up to work when they aren't feeling it and to see Whitney Cummings who you just project a lot of like she always she's always on she can always like rally it seems like nothing affects her it's nice to see that sometimes this shit gets to you too and like you're still showing up and and providing in the way that you can and like you can make something of it so I think this is important for people to see I love you so much Nikki Glazer don't ride elephants I end these awkwardly and I gotta get these hoops off because I can't feel my head 